The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show Because there's a war on for your mind Already the sixth day of May 2016 Thank you for joining us on this live, original, Friday global transmission As we move towards Mother's Day this Sunday Huge 2016 election news, big news on the front with Hillary and the emails and the FBI. Huge economic and military developments as well around the world. It's all coming up today on this Friday edition and several very informative guests. But first, are you awake or are you asleep? I feel like this all the time trying to politically awaken people that they're being lied to, that there's an agenda. It's not left or right. It's, hey, there's mind control going on. The signals broadcast 24 hours a day through all this media. Just become aware of it, and they'll say, there's nothing going on. And I want to say, put on these glasses or start chewing concrete. <laughs> They have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful, and they have blinded us to the truth. The question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. An estimated 50 to 70 million Americans suffer from a sleep disorder or sleep deprivation. Outside the limit of our sight, feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners. Latest census numbers prove the United States has the biggest gap between rich and poor compared to all westernized countries today. Our projections show that by the year 2025, not only America, but the entire planet will be under the protection and the dominion of this power alliance. The gains have been substantial, both for ourselves and for you, the human power elite. <laughs> For the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. That's a total new reality. I've got one that can see. We can't be the only ones who can see. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's got at the root of all our problems. It's a new morning in America. Fresh, vital, the old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> and who are you, little fellow? You will never see it coming. And I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Nice. There is a signal broadcast every second of every day through our television sets. I'm just trying to warn you folks, the television is a giant LED weapon system. It's so advanced. They got a monkey farm in Bastrop, folks, that they do all sorts of testing on great apes, rhesus monkeys, the whole nine yards. And they go, oh, you didn't see this, and punch a button, and it'd be hundreds of monkeys with wires in their brains with television sets brainwashing them. All I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me, and they love me. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now, I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. Do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. The real men of the world have to stand up and say, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Time to take a stand, boys. You know what? You got a little courage. Stand up for yourself. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones, coming to you live from the front lines of the Infowar. The Oscar winners give a press conference and how to buy a sailboat as... We'll be back. Stay with us. Roger Stone normally only comes on 
once a week. Again, uh, the Trump confidant, former head of his campaign, he's in New York right now with Trump. Uh, he says that he is, again, going to drop gigantic bombshells when he comes on at uh, the middle of the third hour, two and a half hours from now. We also have a medical doctor who's testified to the U.S. Senate and others who is an expert on vaccines, highly recommended by Billy Corgan to come on. Uh, it's his personal doctor, but she's also very well known to come on and discuss what they're covering up about vaccines and what's in the mainline medical literature and how they have the secretive federal vaccine damage fund. So um, she's going to be joining us for about 30, 40 minutes. Part of the second hour today, we'll also have open phones throughout this Friday broadcast to cover all the different things that are happening in the world. And David Knight will host the fourth hour today. And then, of course, I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central uh, with that transmission. And even though it's Mother's Day, I'm intending to come in and do the broadcast live. Or I'm thinking about coming in Saturday and taping it. I got to talk to my mom. She's coming over to the house and stuff. We're going to. We're going to see what happens. But this Sunday, an original transmission, regardless, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Then, of course, there's InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central weeknights. Wow, where to start here? We've got Hillary and big developments on the email front and NBC News caught basically covering up a story they've had that's bombshell. We have three of her confidants now uh, being interviewed by the FBI. So that cover-up is starting to unravel. We're going to cover some of that. She is the presumptive nominee now, pulling ahead uh, of Sanders in real elections. First, she stole a bunch of primaries from him. That was quite the uh, education for a lot of people, where they just steal things openly. Uh, but since then, she has begun to get uh, the lead uh, in other primaries without having to steal it, because it creates the perception that she's a winner. Uh, but regardless, she is and has stolen what appears to be the Democratic nomination uh, via theft. Donald Trump and the Patriot Movement, the Liberty Movement, overrode the globalist media, overrode all the party officials and the disinformation armies, and it appears they are not going to contest him. But Bill Kristol and Jeb Bush and George Bush and all of them are in the news today saying never Trump. Here's the headline, Bush 4143 won't be endorsing Trump. If they endorse Trump, I would have a big problem with Donald Trump. If John McCain, who says he's not going to the convention, was endorsing him tacitly or with his nose held, something would be wrong. Trump is coming into a criminal system with a bunch of out-of-control, larcenous hijackers that have taken over the country and taken over the Republican Party. And he says, that's not how this is going to work anymore. We're not going to base this on lobbyists and on foreign countries buying us off, we are going to base it on America first. And that's why everybody from the ADL to the Southern Poverty Law Center, to the Pope, to the Communist Chinese, to the Republican and Democratic establishment are running around, well, you know what, in their britches. Because they know Trump is a nationalist. And I know I've stated that a hundred times, but man, they really are scared of him. And for anybody that says that they could ever be bored right now, what planet are you living on? This election cycle is the most exciting, not of my lifetime, but clearly looking back over history, one of the most exciting in our history since George Washington, our first president. This is incredible what's happening. It's epic. And Trump and his success is only a manifestation. I'm not taking away from the man's courage or his tenacity or his his wit, I totally admire him. But still, he, he would tell you he is a focal point of what's happening historically right now and riding this incredible wave. A wave against globalism in Europe, in Eastern Europe, in Asia, in Eurasia, in Africa, in Latin America, in the Pacific Islands, all over the world, people are waking up to the fact that Decades ago, big multinational corporations came in and bought off their leaders, their presidents, their prime ministers, their parliamentarians. And that they had already transferred most of our sovereignty and our money and our laws and our power offshore.
to the point now they look at us with straight faces and go, you can't read the TPP, but it does make all your laws. You'll find out soon enough. You can't read Obamacare. You can see it after we pass it. You can't, we're not going to tell you the new party rules, but put it to you this way, even if he gets 1237, we're not going to give it to him. Well, notice they're backing off that now because people are finally going, what? What? Some foreign secret group runs things and a, the party says my vote doesn't count, but always said it did? There's that big elephant in the room moment when people finally see it. You ever seen uh, children or adults, for that matter, when you're at a exhibit at a hotel or an exhibit at a museum and they'll have the big pictures on the wall that say find the hidden image there was one last week in the news saying can you find the man standing in the grocery store aisle i meant to show it on on air we probably do it now but the headline was can you see the man standing in the grocery store aisle and it took me about a half a second to see him but they put on a uniform already taken so that he was basically wearing wallpaper that blended into the background so he was almost invisible until you just saw some of the surface contours that weren't completely flat. It's the same thing. When you can't see it, you can sit there with other ignorant people and argue that maybe it doesn't exist. There's not a man standing there against that wall. But as soon as you do see the hidden image, how could you not have seen it before? That's a good parallel or a good analogy of what we're dealing with here. So the reason the system is trying to come in and further dumb people down, the reason the globalists are accelerating their takeover, has everything to do with the fact that they stole civilization in the last hundred years with the advent of mass media, sophisticated propaganda. There were a lot of great developments that humanity saw popularized. And so the population kind of thought the government and science had provided it, not that humanity had provided it through science and culture. And so there was kind of a moment by the end of World War II when people just capitulated to whatever media and government said, like children, and decided what we're being told is completely kosher and completely trustworthy. And the old ideas of the Renaissance, not trusting big combines, not trusting centralized power, but trusting real diversity and local power, those ideas got thrown out as old hat. But we're now rediscovering the common sense very, very quickly because it's like if you're in a Jim Jones cult and he tells you everything's fine and you buy whatever he says because of the peer pressure, but finally he says drink the Kool-Aid and you're going to live forever, but suddenly everybody starts dying and you haven't drunk yours yet, you're going to run into the bushes even if it means they're going to shoot you in the back. You're going to try to take control of your own life because you know drinking that cherry flavored kool-aid laced with cyanide is going to kill you so you run you run you run and we're reaching that point where people realize they don't have any hope but to admit the facts and take action and say no and run for the bushes but we're in better shape than people in a jim jones cult oh they've got armored vehicles and are training troops for domestic takeover and governments are trying to ban free speech they're trying to bring authoritarianism in so we can't get away or can't change the system, but it's too little too late. There's too many alternative media systems. People already know the genie's out of the bottle. There's too many books and videos and information laying around now that people value. The genie's out of the bottle. And so globalism is in deep trouble. The problem is there's been about a 200 year project through British intelligence and others to take over the Christian church and to teach a end of the world philosophy so people lie down and don't fight corruption because it, uh, the end of the world's always around the corner. So why should you stand up and do anything? Yeah, I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles 25 years ago when I got politically involved. And that's what was so frustrating. They admitted the Federal Reserve was private, predominantly owned by foreign families. It was in the Federal Registry. It was in the Congressional Record. They were admitting a plan to establish a planetary corporate world government that would fine independent nation states and individuals and companies that didn't comply with the bureaucracies and the regulations written by secretive global corporate tribunals that would then be handed down to the American Union, 
the Asian Pacific Union, and the European Union, and each of those unions would have sub-directorate unions under it, like the Middle Eastern Alliance, the African Union, and other sub-districts. This is all official. And we go and cover the UN documents and show the New York Times and, and, and show State Department Memorandum 7277 and the public laws. But no, people would just say, that crazy Ron Paul, that crazy Alex Jones, that crazy Pat Buchanan, that crazy. But back then, we weren't the dominant media. They were. Now, this information's dominant, so they just come out and go, okay, it's real. What are you going to do about it? But the con game isn't working. Look at these three stories in front of me today. Three of them. This is out of French news agency, AFP. Pope Francis tells EU to tear down migrant walls. You see, that's the inverse psychology. The founder of the European Union with the Rothschilds, Peter Sutherland, is the head of the, quote, UN Migration Committee. Just like Saudi Arabia and others head up the Human Rights Committee. It's all about a sick joke. It's like having Hitler, you know, over the Jewish organization or something. And he comes out and says, how dare you, EU, not open up more to create the illusion in the Overton window that from his perspective, Europe is bad and guilty for only taking in 5 million the last three years, conservatively, 80% of a military age men without real passports, fake IDs, raping, robbing, and killing with France and other countries saying they're on the verge of, quote, total collapse in their highway systems. It's like Road Warrior, just hordes of people just running around, robbing, stealing, killing, raping. The police are told, don't even file a report. Murders are skyrocketing. People are fleeing in mass. And the Pope is giggling and laughing from South America. It's incredible. The globalists are going to use the collapsing third world that they've engineered the collapse of with their own IMF World Bank policies on record to now weaponize these populations and bring what's left down to the West just like the big money targets the middle class. They target anything independent. This is economic warfare. Now, let's go to the next article. Get ready for this. This is Fox News Associated Press and Sunday Express all reporting this. Here it is. EU border threat. Brussels, that's the unelected bureaucracy that runs the EU. They have a parliament, but it's advisory. The EU created itself. Most of the countries didn't vote to enter it. Almost all of them didn't vote. Their ministers just signed them on to the EU 50-something years ago, calling it the Treaty of Rome, a so-called steel deal. Then it was the European Economic Community, just a trade deal. And then in 2000, they said, you know what? It's a government. And now they say, criticize us, we'll arrest you. Oh, by the way, the EU bureaucracy, guess what? They have exempted themselves from EU federal taxes and national. Look it up. People go, that's outrageous. Congress five years ago exempted itself from insider trading when members of Congress got caught doing it. They, that was the CBS headline. Congress exempts itself from insider trading. Let them eat cake. The new royalty. EU border threat. Brussels to fine countries, 250,000 pounds. That's about $280,000 for every... No, no, that's euros. Yeah, so I calculated that right. That's about $260,000, $270,000. EU border threat. Brussels to fine countries, 250,000 euros for every refugee refused entry. All military-aged men. Look at them in that photo. And they just show up and they say, I'm here for my welfare. I'm here for my house. I'm here for my woman. I'm here to rape and steal and do whatever I want. I come from the most dangerous third world hell pits on earth where Wahhabists rule, and if your wife's caught without a hood over her head, she's killed, and so are you. We're here to run your country. And the EU unelected bureaucracy, honchoed by Merkel, looks at everybody and says, listen, you are going to be fined unless you let in unlimited more numbers. And by the way, Germans and French and Swedes, if you protest... We're going to call you racist and have you arrested, even if you're a presidential front-runner con contender in France. Now, if that isn't tyranny, I don't know what is.
I was sitting here during the break and I was asking myself, why am I in such a really nasty mood right now? And it's because I kind of psychoanalyze myself and it's because I feel like I don't have the energy or the focus or even the right words to describe how incredible a time we are all in. Just how incredible, how amazing, how over the top, how dangerous, how thought provoking, how thrilling a time it is to be alive with all of the developments that are going on. It is just crazy. And so I'm going to briefly, before I plunge into all this news and give the number out and take your calls, I'm going to briefly try to go through a summation here of why I'm frustrated. But in a very positive way. And then hopefully my personal experience from someone totally immersed in researching the globalists and who they are, what they stand for, what their goals are, and how to stop them. But also who we are. We've forgotten who we are. That's the only reason the enemy could be getting away with what they're doing at this point. And it comes down to this. I'm a very frustrated person because I've not been able to properly telegraph to folks just how incredible this struggle is and just how real it is. Now, I've done a better job than probably anybody else, quite frankly. But that's not saying much. Because this thing snuck up on us. And it's here now. And it wants to kill every man, woman, and child of us. And is not going to make deals. And is not going to play games. And most of the people you see on TV, most of the pundits, most of the analysts, most of the quarterbacks... don't know what they're involved in and don't understand the overall continuum and compendium of exactly what field they're playing on. So let me just recap briefly because it's a crime for me to just have an entertaining show here for you and play clips and go over different short attention span theater information and cover this little factoid and that little factoid. I can do that better than anybody else. I can fill every two minutes with a new topic and a new issue and put a nice little bow on it, teleprompter free, like nobody else can. Quite frankly, I can. But I refuse to do that. Because if you just look at all these separate pieces, you're not going to get the answer. But if you pull back and study the white papers written by the technocrats and the controllers, they're very, very clear about what they're doing. And it's a story. It's a blueprint. It's a plan that everybody needs to know. But this is what it comes down to. The globalists, as we've talked about, are eugenicists. They believe that they are taking control of human development and evolution, in their words. They're playing God. They're mad scientists. And they have an excuse that they kill us and dumb us down for our own good because we're a big, giant, dangerous, out of control infestation on the earth likened to high-tech army ants in the Brazilian rainforest that can clear dozens and dozens and dozens of acres a day eating every piece of foliage down to the bone before the New York Times writes an article saying that I don't know that plants don't have bones. It's a figurative statement. Down to the bark. And that they're doing all this in an emergency procedure 
to try to take control of humanity and direct its development to reduce us down to a manageable 200 million people. That's the official UN program. And some are saying, yeah, we know this. We've been to the UN's website. We've heard Ted Turner. We've heard Prince Philip. We've all gone to college. We've all heard this. We know this. Tell us something we don't know. I'm just restating to you what their goal is. I mean, that's pretty darn important to understand that they've got a cosmology where they can absolutely target every man, woman, and child on Earth and incrementally dumb us down and poison us and use cultural warfare systems on us to hamstring our species and to shut down our life force prime programming and then turn us inwardly as a civilization against each other. And first they set up the first world against the third world. But internally they set up the family against each other and, and, and the cultures against each other. And at every level it's about siphoning off productivity to get everyone in a position where they're completely unnatural, completely disconnected from reality, completely confused, and fighting with each other so that there's not enough resources to go around to create a negative economy that begins to implode like a black hole. Well, number one, then you study the globalists. They're some of the most wicked, hateful, evil people who actually enjoy what they're doing. And they're releasing the most dangerous technologies you could imagine that are killing the earth itself while they claim they're preparing to call humans in the name of saving the earth. But then when you study what they're actually doing, they block programs that would reduce population in areas it should be released and should be reduced because it's untenable. They will block clean industrial movements that would cause the 1.5 child model. And then you can say, well, that's just because they're not coordinating this properly. No, you read deeper into their actuaries, like the Royal Commission in 59 and others, and they admit that's their plan. And then you pull back from it and you realize, oh my God, it's a plan to kill humans and kill planimal animals and kill the oceans and kill the atmosphere. And whoever these people are, whatever they're doing, wherever they came from, whatever it is, it's anti-life on this planet, and it's rewriting and taking everything over. So that's what it comes down to. And so I can't just sit here and cover the window dressing of things and make jokes about this commentator and jokes about that commentator and just make fun of the social justice warriors who are just a few stages brainwashed and brain damaged down the room as we are. And I can't make fun of the people that are in fantasy land and only care about movies and comic books and video games because those are a lot of intelligent people who subconsciously have just decided to punch out because they don't believe they can change anything and have just given up on life. And that's another fundamental truth is that when you're given enough food, even if it's tainted, and enough water, even if it's tainted, and you're not physically under attack, at a level that's completely clear to you, a lot of people will just basically go into a morass and put up with it and shut off and basically decide that they don't have any power and they can't have any effect. The reason we're dying is the entertainment, television, unnatural culture. And people say, well, why are you on television? Well, I mean, why were they jacking into the matrix and sending sending Morpheus and Neo in uh, if they were against the Matrix? That's a stupid question. If I'm against someone who's fallen into the ocean in the North Atlantic and they're going to freeze up in about 45 seconds and drift to the bottom and I throw them in a rescue buoy so that they can grab on and be hauled up to the side of the ship, I'm not agreeing with the ocean, I'm injecting something into the ocean that, so, that the people can grab a hold of to hopefully collectively help us all drag ourselves out of this.
But that's really where my frustration comes from, and, and, and it's, it's why I get upset, because I get prepared, I look at all the news, I have more stuff than I could ever cover. It's all extremely interesting, extremely informative. Just three articles out of my stack are just over-the-top important. The Pope lecturing Europe on opening your borders when they've already opened their borders, when he has 200-foot walls. The EU saying we're going to have a quarter million euro fine on countries, on taxpayers, for every refugee who's refused entry, even if they're a terrorist or a criminal. That's global government. That's in your face. EU to find countries hundreds of millions of pounds for refusing to take refugees. The Telegraph. And I've got over 200 other articles and video clips and things that are just as interesting and just as informative. And we'll cover a lot of it in the next three hours after this hour. It's just that it's not my opinion they put hydrofluorosilicic acid, known as fluoride, in the water to brain damage you. It's a fact it reduces fertility. It's a fact it reduces IQ. It's a fact it causes massive increases in cancer. But still, the yuppies and the academics sit around and laugh because if they go pull up the Harvard studies and the rest of it and admit it to themselves, then they might have to actually do something about it. Instead, they've made the decision to fool themselves like delusional cult members and sit here and make a joke and say, oh, that's that silly Texan. He doesn't talk with an affected Atlantic accent. We're not going to listen to him. We're pseudo-intellectuals like George Will saying... The Republican Party is sovereign, close quote. We decide who's president, not the mere plurality of voters. He thinks that's powerful to declare himself the new royalty? That's intellectual? After they've held out that our vote counts? That's all a con artist has is the confidence game. That's why they're called con men, confidence men. And that's all this is, is a giant facade, and almost everyone working for the system isn't even aware of its full import. That's the sickest part of it. George Will says GOP must stop Trump even if he wins the nomination. And now they've got all these Republicans coming out and Paul Ryan coming out saying he supports Hillary over Donald Trump, because it's all about the lobbyist, it's all about the foreign interest, it's all so sick. This is the blue-eyed darling that all these conservative hosts tell you is so conservative. The architect of amnesty, what a giant joke. And what does Paul Ryan and Hillary Clinton and George Will and the communist Chinese and the Pope and, and, the, and, the, and the unelected commissars of the EU, what do they all have in common? They all have disdain for the American people. And you know what? We were feared 60 years ago. Highest IQs, most inventions, most vicious in average in battle. Now we're the most unhealthy, the stupidest, because we've been under 60 years of high-tech globalist warfare in the culture, in the food, in the water, in everything we do. We have been taught not to work hard. We have been taught to be lazy. We have been taught to be stupid. And we lay around wondering what the next movie is or the next rock concert or the next TV show because reality's so boring to us. You know why reality's so boring? Because you're not in reality. You believe what the nightly news says, and, and you believe the stuff you watch on Netflix is real at a subconscious level. When every study and every actuary and every common sense realization shows that all you gotta do is go out in nature, all you do is got to go out and exercise. All you got to do is go out and sit on top of a mountaintop or down in a creek bed and just open your heart up and say, God, I know you're there. Come into my life right now. Not the fallen evil on this planet, but the God of the universe. And you know what happens? You're free right then at that moment. And you will become addicted to something that actually makes you healthy and strong and happy. Except for one thing, as the Bible says. The beginning of knowledge is the coming of sorrow, or with great knowledge comes sorrow. Because then you're going to know how things really work, and you're going to see all these zombies around you in their little self-affected 
la la land delusions that they're in charge and they're powerful because they're cynical and they're weird and they kind of diss other people and they don't talk to their coworkers and they're all about themselves and all about their fake righteousness, whether it be leftist garbage or right wing garbage. They are in a program. They are in a mentally ill, narcissistic, false paradigm loop because they've been completely overtaken by the system. New big study out in the latest issue of Environment and Behavior finds that walking in the woods particularly massively causes brain activity to increase in areas of pleasure, enlightenment, satisfaction, you name it. You mean humans actually in their normal environment at a genetic level we resonate? That's right, the iPads, the TVs, all of it. This false culture is killing us. This artificiality is destroying us and it's being designed by design to take us down. We're being inducted into strange days into artificial systems. And, and I pledged to do this years ago, but I'm going to start, and I'm gonna encourage my crew to start, every week having like an hour cooking show where we show where the food came from, we have a chef or somebody tear it apart, cook it, discuss what's in it, and then sit around and eat the food and talk about being human around a fire, even if it's indoors with a fire pit. And that activates all the archival race memories the studies are out all the epigenetics you've got to do that uh gardening getting your hands in the mud planting it then tending it pulling the insects off it by hand uh then picking it then slicing it then cooking it all of that releases the chemicals in your brain to make you healthy to make you satisfied uh, to make you know how to make the right decisions to make you centered i'm going to start going out where i just sit in the woods at night for like an hour or two cross-legged around a fire with some low-light HD cameras and literally just cook a chicken over it myself and just basically eat it with nothing else. Things like that, because I'm telling you, when you do it, you get high. And I've always known that since I was a kid. All I wanted to do was camp, camp, camp. Can we camp? Can we camp? Can I camp in the backyard? Can I go to my friend's house that's camping? Can I camp? And back then it wasn't a nanny state. I was like nine years old. We lived on the edge of Dallas, but there was a rural area nearby and a big railroad track and a bunch of no man's land uh, property. And, and my dad went and talked to one of the farmers and you know, would let us go over there and camp on their property. The cops didn't come over there and ask, what are you doing camping when you're nine, 10 years old? I mean, I used to sometimes go get dropped off in the woods at, at you know, somebody's farm or ranch and get dropped off with our stuff when I was 10 years old with our tents, our food and everything. We'd just go march off into the woods on a long weekend for three days. And man, my brain would turn on. I would just have such understanding. I would be basically on the best drug of my life for those three days. And then the car would pull up. We'd all pile in and get driven back into town. There's a reason they arrest parents all over the world that let their kids play in the backyard now. There's a reason they're going after the Amish. There's a reason they're going after local farms. There's a reason. It's human activity. You want to defeat the globalist? Start turning the cell phones off. Only use them as a tool. Realize it's literally a radioactive weapon. It's sending off radioactive waves. Uh, cell phone waves are, are microwaves. Uh, it is hurting you. It is tracking you. It is, it is built by slaves in the most horrible slave pits on earth with suicide nets and forced drugging and forced abortion in death pits with mobile execution vans waiting outside to harvest organs if you cause a revolt. Uh, it, it, it is a demonic weapon forged in a satanic uh, furnace by the servants of, 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 of a twisted Vulcan with Festus leering over the slaves. I'm not talking about Festus on Gunsmoke if you're a new listener. Look it up. And it's just all, you're in a fantastical science fiction movie. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And the enemy knows exactly what they're doing. They, they brag about it. I mean, you think I'm like Chris Matthews? Uh, that'd be a cute clip to play, you know, him going, look at Melania Trump, look at that walk, she's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at that. Sure, that's an entertaining clip to play yesterday, but I didn't play it. Because... I can admire a good-looking woman like anybody else, but I really admire women and children and men as well. I want them to live and be free. I love them so much 
I want to break the matrix, but that's not loving them at all. We're all in this together. Why should we want to be slaves inducted into some type of high-tech meat grinder? An incremental kill switch? Folks, I need your support. Plus, you need the items and the products we've got. InfoWarsLife.com has all the nutraceuticals discounted 10% off because we're discounting the non-GMO heirloom seeds, the shortwave radios, the water filtration systems, everything. 10% off. I'm running that through next week. These 40 to 60, 40 to 30 percent off on the high quality storable foods will end Sunday, and that's it. At InfoWarsStore.com, take advantage of that. They do not want you to be self sufficient. Get self sufficient. They are engineering a giant crash. Plus, your purchase supports the broadcast. A total win win. InfoWarsStore.com, second hour coming up. If you're watching us on television, there's two things on screen that say a lot. InfoWars.com report central bankers moving to ban cash. That means moving to ban barter, moving to ban underground normal human economies, moving to bring in systems where they can fine, fee, and tax you for not following their political directives, like they're moving in Europe, saying 250,000 euro fines for every invader immigrant from the Middle East brought in that a country refuses to take in. And then something here on screen, if you're watching us on television, I'll describe it for radio listeners, also describes what's happening, an iPhone. I was pointing out these are built in the worst conditions on Earth. You say, why do you have one? Well, the others are built just as bad as well. It's all horrible. And I point out constantly that it is a device that can be used for good to expose the device. But it radiates you with cell phone radiation, microwave radiation. It tracks you. It games you. It gives data to the big corporations to create actuaries to rip you off. That's all admitted. But what about the symbol? The devil has a metaphysical rule that God laid down that he has to give warning. There has to be a, you know, like on the drugs, they'll tell you they can kill you. you know, the different medications, and they say, you know, this medication can kill you, though. Look at the apple. It has a bite out of it. And what does that represent? The fall of humanity from grace when we have the knowledge of good. We have technologies of good, ideas of good, ideas of wholesomeness, ideas of straightforwardness, like I'll sell a high-quality product that's the best I can develop with the best research ever, and as I learn more, I upgrade them and make them even better, and then I sell it at a very competitive low price because that's how I want to be treated, plus then people get that it is high-quality, has a lower price, it starts taking over the market, and then I become very successful. That's knowledge of good. That's how I operate. I'll be honest with you, though, I am exceedingly wicked because I've been brought up and my many generations before me have been brought up since the fall. And believe me, there was one. And I have knowledge of evil. It doesn't mean I like it. Doesn't mean I execute it. Doesn't mean I enjoy it. But I can sit there and look at a problem and I have the knowledge of good comes up and I can make choices off that menu or the knowledge of evil comes up, and then I have to look into evil and all the crimes and all the sins and all the twins. And I'm very good at it, by the way. If I wanted to be evil, I'm like a Michael Jordan compared to a lot of these globalists. That's why I'm able to expose them. I'm not bragging. It's, it's, it's my sinful side is, is not executed, but just ginormous. Just huge storeroom. All the ancestors, all the, all the ancestral sin, which is biblical, but is genetic. All the compressed data in my genes, all of it. All the good, the bad, and the ugly, they're all right there. And I see how it all works and how the scams all work and all of it. I have the knowledge of evil. So I'm falling. But a lot of people don't even know there's knowledge of good and evil. They just think, what gets me ahead? What's fun? Like, liars think it's cute and funny to constantly lie. They think it's, it's like a new technology they've developed. And uh, it, it, again, it's twisted logic. Steve Jobs said, I don't let my children have iPhones or iPads or anything or ever let them on the computer. And they said, why? And he said, because it brain damages them. And they said, why would he admit that? Because he metaphysically has to. Hello, my name is uh, Count Dracula. I live right up the hill there at the castle. Yes, the castle. <gasps> Young lady, I would like to come by some night. Not tonight. I'm busy. I have to go. I have things to do, but... Might I come by sometime? Well, sure, come on in now. Oh, sure. Oh, thank you. I can't stay long. Would you like a glass of wine? No, no, no. I'm not a drinker. <laughs> not of that vintage. <laughs> but, but thank you for inviting me. We're friends now. I'll be coming back, right? You want me to come back? Yes, I told you, didn't I?
right on there. A symbol far more evil than an upside down cross or a pentagram. The seal of Satan. The fall of man. And there's another symbol. You told it's the Star of David. No, it's not. It's the seal of Solomon. Two triangles. Why don't you look into what that symbol really means? Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're here live. And I've always covered the anti-human operations that are going on, the attempt to put us into an artificial high-tech system. But I'm going to more and more focus on that because everything the globalists are doing is about carrying that out. And I just mentioned in the last hour, I have incredible Donald Trump clips in, in incredible you know, news about what the globalists are up to. Huge earthquake uh, uh, reports and Mount St. Helens basically becoming active again and having a bunch of earthquakes yesterday. So many important things are going on. The world is changing. We're entering an amazing time right now. There's huge awakenings happening, but also evil is coming out in the open. There's another article uh, here that dovetails with this today. New Holocaust study. Medical errors, third leading cause of death in the U.S., and that's when they admit it's a medical error. Now, MD medicine is a wonderful thing if you've got a broken leg or a gunshot wound, has been said. But the big medical combines, the overuse of antibiotics, uh, so many of these other systems are causing giant problems. And more and more, like vaccine makers, they're being given economic immunity from the things that they're engaged in. Not the doctors themselves, but the system. Why is it becoming one of the top causes of death in the country? Well, a lot of it is also the drugs and the procedures that are being authorized. And now more and more computers are making the decisions of what surgeries or what treatments are available. And nothing's being taught to people about what vitamin B12 can do. There was big studies out even in the New York Times a few weeks ago in live science about most depression, mental illness, schizophrenia linked to the gut not being able to absorb vitamin B12. But see... Big Pharma doesn't want you to know why you're depressed because you're not out in the sun, you're not eating good food, uh, your gut flora has been killed by all the pesticides in the food. They want to treat the illnesses. They don't want to take you back to the basics of why you're ill and try to stop it. The Washington Post reports medical errors now third leading cause of death in the United States. Reports the new John Hopkins study. And then we break it down and show it's actually the number one cause in John Rappaport's article for InfoWars.com. Of course, I mentioned this. Scientists explain why it's inevitable that America will be hit by absolutely monstrous earthquakes because we're overdue. Everybody else has already had it. Uh, so we've got some of that news coming up today. But before I go any further, we will get about 45 into this hour into the Trump news and the election news, uh, into all the things that are unfolding on that front. 27 lawmakers warn Obama against transferring service-to-air missiles to Syrian rebels. Now, that's in the Associated Press. That is in Breitbart, you name it. I told you four years ago when Benghazi happened, when they transferred the service-to-air missiles, the MPADs, that when you started hearing the mainstream media warn about MPADs and say that they'd been transferred by Obama, which they've been openly doing, get ready for the airlines to start getting shot down. So that's coming up as well here today. Uh, we also have politically Paul Ryan coming out and saying he will not support Trump. Uh, he would support even Hillary. Paul Ryan, architect of open borders, says he won't back Trump over Hillary. And all Trump is doing is pushing nationalism. That's why they're so scared of him because whether he's good or bad, he is somebody who they do know is an outsider from their system and the lobbyists are in a open panic. And it shows how the two-party system at the top is so controlled that we're being lectured by these people. And we're being lectured by the communist Chinese dictatorship. We're being lectured by the Pope, the very same Pope that has praised quarter million pound or quarter million euro fines for every refugee refused entry into Europe. I mean, this is global government. An unelected EU gets set up. It, it, it takes over your country without the nations voting. France didn't vote. Germany didn't vote. England didn't vote. The UK didn't vote. It's making your laws. They bring in 5 million refugees. They're running around murdering and killing and raping out of war-torn zones. And then they say, we're going to fine you if you don't bring more in. 
That's the TPP that they ratified in secret and say we're now under and all the rest of it globally. And Congress couldn't even see a copy of it. And now we're told that makes our decisions. And when the UK says we might leave the EU, Obama says, hey, you're under treaties with us. You're not allowed to. See, we're already in global government. And there are other little agreements. In the 1980s, billions of dollars was put in a secretive fund with a secret court, the Vaccine Damage Fund. You see, other drugs supposedly can be sued. Uh, if FinFin -fin makes you, you know, have heart valve disintegration, well, you can then, you know, sue them or, but, but, but see, not the vaccine makers. And back when they did that, there were 15 or 20 they were trying to push. Now it's hundreds they want to push on the people of the planet, and they're given a secret court, and then taxpayer money secretly pays out all the dead and dying. The inserts, though, still admit that they can kill you or cause neurological disorders or Counts other problems. And now this year they've got bills introduced to the Congress to even get rid of the inserts with vaccines, you see. Just like they don't want labeling on GMO. Now, the lady we've got on with us till about 45 after, and I really appreciate her coming on, is Dr. Uh, Tony Bark. Uh, and I really appreciate her coming on. Uh, Disease-reversal.com uh, is her website. She is a prestigious medical doctor, testified before Congress, the Senate. And I'd already knew who she was, read some of her articles over the years, but I was glad we were able to get in contact with her because she's also the medical doctor uh, for the founder of Smashing Pumpkins and a big listener of the show and a great, great mind when it comes to deciphering what's happening. Uh, of course, Billy Corgan, who was here with us in studio a few weeks ago, and she received her medical doctorate from Rush University in 86, We're studying psychology, University of Illinois, and University of London. She immediately took uh, the position uh, of uh, director of pediatric emergency room at um, Michelle Reese Hospital in Chicago. So, boy, she's seen it all. After two years, she began her studies in alternative medicine practices, such as nutrition and classical homeopathy, all while keeping her hands in emergency and urgent care medical work, as well as starting her private practice in 93. 2010, Dr. Bark also began a master's program in healthcare emergency medicine at Boston University, where she focused on vaccine safety, efficacy, and ethics issues. She worked as an adjunct professor at the Boston Graduate Program, teaching and um, uh, the Effects of Disaster on Psychology, Dr. Bark also co-produced the documentary Bought, the feature in the documentary Silent Epidemic, Vaccine Wars, and Food Choices. She is an alternative and uh, active in legislative issues and has given testimony for Senate Health Committee, disease-reversal.com. And Dr. Bark, thank you so much for coming uh, on with us. You heard me kind of set the table there for folks that just tuned in. Some of the news um, we're, we're going to break in five minutes, but first off, thank you for coming on with us. Uh, but but but, what is front and center for you today with all the changes that are happening? Well, I, I do see the tide turning somewhat. Yesterday, I was an expert witness in um, a Midwestern state in family court. This is something that I've done many times. This is on regarding vaccine custody issues. I've done it in Australia as well. Um, I've worked on cases in, in Canada, and I have a case in the vaccine court itself right now as well. But I do feel that the tide is turning. I mean, the judge yesterday was fascinated with hearing what I had to say about the lack of vaccine safety, about the court, and the opposing physician um, was unaware of the vaccine court, unaware of VAERS reporting, was not aware of what, how to recognize a vaccine damage. And this is exactly what we see is that while the government set up this system in 86, and it was 14 shots we were pushing at that time, 14, we are up to, by the age of five, we are up to, you know, 49 doses in some states, in some states it's 63, in some states it's more if they push an annual flu shot or the, the nasal inhalant for under six years of age. And then in some states it's even more because we're seeing Gardasil, while it's not on any state mandate other than Rhode Island, um, it is being pushed heavily at the doctor's office. So I see more bills coming down the road. We know there's something called Healthy People 2020, which is for adults, and it's tied to the Department of Transportation. That's really freaking scary. That means, oh, you know, Mr. Jones, you haven't, we're, we don't know that you've been vaccinated in the last 10 years. You can't get on this flight. You need to step out of the line and go get MMR, I, OPV, IPV, DPT. That's right. God knows what else. That's you what's know, going you on. Know, uh, as, as dystopic a face I try to put on things, 
I get an expert like you on, Dr. Bark, and then I start realizing all the horrible stuff I forgot to say. They want this as a right to travel uh, to, to supposedly medicalize us. And this is a whole military industrial big pharma complex that's been caught in thousands of, in many cases, lethal secret testing on the general public. Why would we trust anything that big pharmaceutical co co companies like Bayer, who for a decade knowingly had HIV and hepatitis A, B, and C in their factor eight blood product and in their own court cases, it, mainstream news, even NBC News came out and said, they said, screw it, keep selling it, who cares if we kill people? I mean, you talk about an arrogant group of evil folks. Congress allowed them. So Congress passed, you know, it was illegal for them to sell that factor eight, the HIV tainted factor eight in the states, but Congress passed something at the 11th hour, literally at the 11th hour, it was like midnight on a Christmas Eve. And Canada. Yeah, and they were allowed to um, sell it to Spain, Portugal, and I believe um, France or Japan. And then That's about right. 15,000 people developed HIV from the tainted factor eight, and there were lawsuits. But, you know, it's the price of doing business. I mean, the amount they had to pay out is nothing compared to what they made on And let's be clear, the, the executive's eight. minutes have been public from the criminal trials in France and, and Australia and other areas. It came out that they knew it had HIV and hepatitis Absolutely. was a death sentence to basically anyone that took it with the HIV and they did it. Folks, these are sick people. Please continue, doctor. Yeah, so I mean, that's one example. You know, there's many examples like the SB40 tainted polio vaccine. Cancer virus. Exactly, and that was the 40th simian virus. You know, we don't even talk about the other 39. Um, but, you know, the government knew that they were aware that SB40 was, was contaminating that polio vaccine and what they said to the to I believe it was Cutter that was first making it and then a few other companies was that you know we'll allow you to sell off this lot you've got till you've got a few more years to sell this off and then we want you to start over well there's actually so first of all that's egregious and nefarious and then there's evidence that it was in tainting the vaccines as late as as 1997. Wow well you've done so much amazing work when you testify to Congress or the Senate I mean, I know you try to crystallize the info down, but uh, we've got the CDC documents, as you know, from 2000, where the head of the CDC is like, I'm not going to let my grandkids have this. What are we going to do? We got to cover this up. But they never fix it. It's only gotten worse. Now there's more vaccines they want to take. I mean, as autism goes from, you know, one in 30,000 to one in 58, they're talking about one in three within a decade. There's got to be a point where they know the epidemic's going to be so bad that they're going to end up getting brought down or are they just kicking the can down the road doctor no i mean if you think about it the healthcare system the whole system in the united states is the largest growing business it's the largest growing field in the whole world i mean exponential you know between cvs's on every corner between hospitals growing um and new medical centers and urgent cares everywhere this is an exploding field and so they see it as a win-win. I mean, if more people are sick, <clears throat> you know, if we can manage to not kill people, but just really damage them so they have chronic illness, then the drug companies make a lot of money, the hospitals make a lot of money. You know, these nonprofit quote unquote hospitals, they get away with so much bullshit. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's worse than the for profits because they get federal tax money. They they sell a can of Coke for ten dollars, only get a dollar from insurance. So then they get federal funding for the nine dollars, or you know, an aspirin for a hundred dollars, or a Pap smear for three hundred, and the insurance company only pays fourteen, and then the rest the federal government gives. So it's I mean, just like it's, the military industrial complex, seven hundred billion a year here alone. Of course they're funding Al Qaeda. Of course they're funding terror groups because when the terror groups then attack. They then have an excuse to go into those countries and half the time don't even target the actual group. They'll target somebody totally innocent like the Iraqi people. Well, it, you know, so this is a good example. So yesterday or the day before, yesterday I was testifying all day. So I was driving and testifying. But the day before I was posting something and I saw somebody was um, talking about how great carbs and he studies cardiovascular disease and he's saying the benefit of eating a carb diet. And I talked about ketogenic diets, you know, that I put a lot of my patients into ketosis, it reverses cancer, it reverses diabetes, it reverses heart disease, even Alzheimer's. 
And he immediately attacked me and said, patients can die. It's deadly dangerous. I mean, this is coming out the same day that, you know, the, the whole industrial complex is admitting that pharmaceuticals is the third leading cause of death. And I, by the way, think it's probably second or first leading cause of, cause of death. And we can talk about that. But, you know, to say that it's dangerous, deadly dangerous to go into ketosis. This is one of the most out of control mass killing industries ever. It's like Satan telling you if you read a Playboy, you might become Satan. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's totally insane. It's, it's, right. it's like Hitler saying, don't be mean to the Jews. In fact, get into that, doctor. Let's talk about the numbers because we find the same thing. It looks like medical neglect, medical problems, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, mistakes and drugs are probably together the number one cause of death. Well, I see it a little differently. Those are very high numbers that cause death. But actually, if you really think about it, you know, I'll see a breast cancer patient, right? And then I take the history because I spend two hours with all my patients. And the history could be that they were in rounds and rounds and rounds of antibiotics, rounds of antibiotics. So, you know, we know that when you're on a lot of antibiotics, um, it alters your bowel flora. It also reduces your intrahepatic, it increases intrahepatic circulation of hormones without degrading them and detoxifying them. So it's possible that patient would have never had breast cancer if they weren't thrown antibiotics for every friggin' sinus complaint, every friggin' cold. You know, so it's worse than that. And then look at the vaccines that can possibly be contaminated with retroviruses. We know that. I mean, we know that there's contamination, prions, retroviruses, um, passages, you know, they put the vaccines through passages through these varo cells and these, these longevity cell lines. And at certain passages, they're carcinogenic, they're oncogenic. So how do we know that a polio vaccine that somebody got when in the 60s when they were a child, and now they're eating glyphosate, you know, on their food, um, that the combination is not increasing their risk for cancer, you know, especially then if they've had antibiotics thrown at them. So a lot of times when you hear patients died from complications of their disease, um, I believe that they actually died from the medications. You know, another absolutely, good doctor, stay right there. I've got to say, I am so impressed with you because I've done read so much literature, mainline studies. This stuff's really hidden out there, but I've never heard somebody move as fast as you and bring up so many key things. So hopefully, maybe you stay the whole hour if you can, because I want to get more into this with you and and, and obviously have you back a lot. Uh, but uh, Dr. Uh, Tony Bark is our guest, disease-reversal.com. Back up a little bit. Sure. And get into the viruses, the prions, folks. That's what is connected to Alzheimer's and other things that we know are in the vaccines. You got into immortal cell lines. This is all mainline science, but no one even knows this. Where they're getting these vaccines from is like these zombie cell lines. And, and just drill into then where you think this is really all going. Because you're absolutely right. The average doctor isn't evil. No. But, 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 but they're a priest of a cult that's run by the Rockefellers on record that wants you sick to, to basically take all your money from your whole life into their system and to control it because they don't just want the money, they print the money. They don't want you having your own discretionary income to build anything that ever competes with them. It's all about competition being a shin, a total final takeover. So please continue. Well, okay, so I, you know, I trained in pediatrics and rehab. I ran a peds emergency room, right? And I knew that many kids reacted very badly to vaccines. That was clear. But when I trained, we didn't vaccinate pregnant women. We didn't vaccinate newbie, you know, newborns that were premature or sick. We didn't even vaccinate women who were thinking of getting pregnant. And again, it was 14 shots by the age of five. That was the 80s before this court. So things were, you know, a vaccine could be risky, but I was actually told, oh, we'll never mandate chickenpox vaccine because with every vaccine comes a risk of serious injury and it's not worth it for chickenpox, right? Well, that's all, you know, that's gone now. All that's gone. So as soon as they lost liability, things went crazy. But what I didn't know until I started doing my master's in 2010 was that, you know, these policies are based on nothing but lobbyists. You know, the lobbyists write these bills clearly. Um, and then we've got regulatory capture to the nth degree. I mean, the committees at the CDC, at the at the F FDA are 100% with one exception of the consumer rep are people who work for the main manufacturers of, of the vaccines. The CDC actually, there is something called FACA, which is Federal Advisory Committee uh, Act, which says you can't have undue conflict of interest financial or otherwise with the industry you're regulating. And the CDC on their website says as a matter of policy, they waive that for people on that on the vaccine committees because they want specialists. So
So we've got, so that's a problem right there. But when I was writing my papers, I interviewed people that were the consumer reps at the time or had been consumer reps at the ASA committee, at the HHS flu vaccine committee, at the Verbeck committee. And they all told me, especially the one at the Verbeck committee, that it's that they're very aware that there's contamination. And if you go on to websites like Viruses, which is a journal for people in the industry, they'll say, you know, they'll advertise counters, new counters that, you know, can test better sensitivity for prions in the bovine serum. You know, these are the kind of ads. So I started going on to Virusist and looking at the ads for the counters. And you're talking about inside baseball, inside the big plants, uh, what they're up to. But again, there's a, this is all from my research, a cover story, even for the people working in the plants and the engineers and chemists and, and virologists, because there's a larger program above it, just like yes. our phones are full of hack tech and things for the whole shadow government that's now admitted, vaccines are really overall just the cover for a larger binary weapons program. I mean, it it, it very well could be. All I know is the, the facts that I know. Is that There's it is contaminated lot. and they're covering it up. Oh yeah, I mean, it, that that's very clear. And I don't believe that it started out with that intention. I really don't believe that. I think if you read The Virus and the Vaccine, it's a book on the race to develop between Salk and Sabin and the government to develop the polio vaccine. But bring it back sure, to Sure, the monkey kidneys had the cancer virus, I get it. Exactly. But they're still you know, giving stuff off the same you know, batch. They're still, still having to recall it today because of it. Absolutely. So we have a lot. Yeah, it's a great that, that's such a great book. There's so many really good books out there. But then meanwhile, you have all this knowledge. All these other great people have the knowledge. It's a fact. We raise it. Mainstream media goes, there was never a cancer virus. There's no secret fund. None of it. There's no side effects. Safe and effective. Safe and effective. It's the law. Take the shots when there is no law. But now they're trying to make laws. We're going to talk about forced inoculation and intimidation and Colorado wanting to make you be in databases. When we come back with our amazing guest, boy, you can tell she's going to be here a lot if she'll join us. What, a, what an informed, dynamic uh, uh, lady. Disease-reversal.com. Dr. Tony Bark, amazing lady. I'm so glad uh, that Billy Corgan uh, said that I should get her on. Thank you, Billy. We'll be back straight ahead. Stay with us. There are interests in this world that have taken over. The military-industrial complex is just one of them. Eisenhower warned of a technological, scientific elite overlording all of that in his 1961 farewell address and boy we're living under it now they are coming out with a big push worldwide for forced inoculations or to have states like california pass laws to say your 11 year old can have an age of consent uh to say they want vaccines and the government can give them money all i know is the vaccinated kids i know are just so unhealthy mine are unvaccinated completely or super healthy by the grace of god People say, wow, your kids, they're like electric. They're so smart. They're so happy. They're so healthy. What happened? And I go, no vaccines. But other kids they run into make fun of them and say, you're going to get us sick. You haven't had your vaccines. I thought if you had yours, you were protected, right? So then how is it that we need to be? You know, my dad's a physician, and almost every doctor he knows doesn't take the vaccines. Their kids don't because they see the reactions. The nurses at the hospital, all three of my kids tried to pressure, and they said, we don't give ours either, but. You know, yeah, we see it. We, we've had nurses on to the heads of e ERs and, and the heads of preemie uh, floors. And they come in, the bioethics board, and says, vaccinate them. Six-month-old baby. And they go, but they, they have breathing problems and die. And they say, do it. So they get the paddles ready and they get the defibrillators and, they, and then they give them the shots and watch which ones start dying. And they, they save them. They give the shots and then they save them. But some die. We've had them on whistleblowers. It's been in the news. And then it came out in newspapers after we had them on. Yeah. See, used to, you knew, don't give them to preemies. Don't give a pregnant woman a shot. You give them a shot, boom, that baby miscarriage right there on the spot. Six months old, doesn't matter. So, But they wanted to be able to say vaccines are totally, so they went five years ago, no, no, give pregnant women two shots. Even though the insert says don't do it, it's just a doubling down and in your face. Oh, you're going to resist us? We're going to push even more. Yeah, there it is. Hospital. Vaccine is causing babies to stop breathing. See the interview. See the video. Infowars.com. Get that out to every pregnant woman you know. Get it out to the hospitals. Cause a public debate. We can override the globalists, and that's what's happening. Whether you love Trump or hate him, he's an example of overriding them and all their lies and all their propaganda. We're going to go back to the doctor here in a moment. First off, 
We have the highest quality non-GMO storable foods out there at the lowest price, powered by My Patriot Supply. I, I've, I've been selling storable foods for years. It's always good to have for emergencies. Plus, as food prices go up, you can always eat your food and save money on inflation. But with all the wars they're starting and the globalism and the elites getting bunkers and storable foods and local police departments getting storable foods, now was the time. And folks pick up the political climate. I've never seen people take advantage of a sale like this, and that's a win-win. But it's kind of sad to see that we are in so much trouble. People get it. I wish this wasn't the case. I wish I wasn't having to get more storable food. I'm even stockpiling in here at the office now. Uh, a lot of medical supplies, you name it, just in case things unravel, because that's what they're getting ready for. I hope that's not the case. Infowarsstore.com or Infowarsselect.com takes you right to the storable foods area, 30 to 40 percent off, and it will end Sunday. I will not extend it. That'll be a week we've extended it this Sunday. And it's the full spectrum of My Patriot Supply, just private label by us. And 10% off all other survival items, high quality, uh, crank powered and solar powered shortwave radios, non-GMO heirloom seeds, a giant spectrum of 14 different brands there. G-Shock watches, super high quality water filtration systems. TheraSafe, in case the reactor melts down, strategic relocation, the book and the film, all discounted, all nutraceuticals, vitamin B12, highest quality, Methacobalamin organic that we had produced. Uh, the winter sun, vitamin D3 organic, totally absorbable, vegan, uh, extremely absorbable, brain force, DNA force, anthroplex, all of it. Try them out for yourself. Survival Shield X2, colloidal silver, silver, silver bullet. All of them 10% off the already big discounts that are there and free shipping on orders, $50 or more, and 10% off additionally if you sign up for auto ship. You take all the different discounts that are there. It's, we're talking about as high as 70% discounts where we lose money on some items. But we're doing it, ladies and gentlemen, because, again, it's about having lost leaders and getting folks in the door to try some of these products to become repeat customers and then be able to self-fund our operation, which I'm very thankful to you for. So it's a win-win as we fight back against medical tyranny, the globalist takeover, uh, all these wars they're starting, how they're flooding us with uncompatible, radical jihadist. I mean, you can see the destabilization program because the managers that handle the crises get more power and more control in this f fascist crony capitalist system with those type of programs. So again, take advantage of those specials, the 30 to 40% off, depending on which food package it is. 30 is the lowest discount. Uh, will end Sunday at InfoWarsStore.com. You can also call to ask any questions, 888 Two five three three one three nine. Now, going back to our guest, I'm going to try to give you the floor now in, in the next uh, 22 minutes that we have left in the broadcast here. Uh, Dr. Tony Bark, disease-reversal.com. And again, she's a medical doctor and she is uh, Billy Corgan's uh, personal physician. He said, this lady knows more than anybody I know. And I, when I looked her up, I said, oh, I've seen her on C-SPAN. I've seen her. I know, I've seen her website. She's a really you know, smart lady. Yeah, let's get her on. But wow, blowing us away breaking down vaccines, we were getting to forced inoculation. We were getting to having to get shots to get on a plane or to get your driver's license. Bill Clinton signed an executive order. They never implemented it, but they started it, uh, the ball rolling back in 1997. It's in my first film, America Destroyed by Design, to take urine and blood to get a driver's license. Now, D.C. started a few years ago, free driver's license if you give them a blood sample. So it's begun. Let's get into how they're trying to force us to have the government and corporations make us put things in our body. Uh, the final frontier. And then we have convulsions and die. A secret tribunal, if we jump through 10 years of hoops, might give a half million dollars of taxpayer money quietly to our families. Doctor? Well, okay. So first of all, all of the health sciences have been completely corrupted. But as far as I'm concerned, the vaccine issue is the worst one because that's the only time we see mandates for public school for certain jobs. So that's why it's the most egregious in my mind. But, you know, in my film in Bought, you know, one of the whistleblowers I interviewed was a straight a state fraud investigator who was fired for investigating state fraud because it didn't it. It had to do with pharma. And he was told, you know, pharma pays both sides of the aisle back off of this. And he did it. So he was fired. 
Of course, you know, many, many years later, about a decade later, it got settled. He got a lot of money from the EEOC just from being fired. And then, of course, the whole thing was settled for about five billion dollars. But there was an organization, a ring of seven states where the directors of mental health for those states were trying to implement um, TMAP, which was a Texas. It was a test that you would implement to uh, kids in junior high and it would it would point out the risk of kids who were maybe bipolar, you know, or difficult, you know, had behavior issues. And it was in order to push drugs on kids. And they were pushing drugs that were not even, that were off label, that weren't even approved for kids. I mean, this was the whole goal. Sure, and Bush was, pushed that as the new freedom initiative yes, nationwide. Yes, yes, that was Bush pushing that, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's so frightening that, you know, so they start with vaccines. And by the way, I recently ran into a priest high up in the Catholic Church internationally who told me that he knows what's going on, that he has seen many people vaccinated at gunpoint in third world countries. Oh, yeah. And that he knows that if you're high up in the in the Vatican, you know the WHO is a problem. I mean, he was aware of what was going on in Kenya. I mean, in um, in uh, Ghana, I think it was. Oh Ghana. yeah, the Africans used to love the white witch doctors 100 years ago that showed up because they knew they had good medicine. Right. For the last 50 years, they run. I mean, right. this is in they the news because they, they know because they, they they go they come to a village, find pregnant, give shot, my baby die, everyone, and then right. I mean, these are these people have been interviewed all over the world. They just are killing them. Well, look what happened in Africa with the swine flu shot. Uh, so in Europe and in Australia, they recognize that some kids get narcolepsy from that shot, right? And they got paid out. But not, But we had an epidemic of nodding disease in Africa. Oh. Nodding. Yeah, interesting, right? And, and if you look at where it was, it was where that swine flu shot was. I'm sorry to interrupt. You're just too incredible. Hey, bring up all these points I forgot about. Remember in, in 96 and again, a few years ago, they officially got caught. The UN adding a hormone to the tetanus shot to cause uh, second trimester miscarriages? That was, in, that was in the Philippines, and it was the late 90s. It was HCG, and that's what was going on in Kenya last year, and the Catholic doctors and the Catholic bishops pointed it out. So it happened in the Philippines in the late 90s, and it happened again in Kenya. So it's HCG, which is a hormone that your placenta makes when you're pregnant. And so if you have antibodies to it, every time you're pregnant, you're going to attack your own placenta. And what was so sick, you're the doctor, but I would remember reading an article, it wasn't just that it would kill the baby, it would cause autoimmune disease in the women's I, uteruses where absolutely. your body attacks itself. And if they were doing this in the 90s and the UN got caught, they said it was an accident that got added. But it exactly. turned out they had over 100 makers around the world all accidentally adding this. Well, I didn't know how many makers, but I did know it happened in the Philippines and it was called out, and I think again by the Catholic. It was all over the country, yeah, yeah. all over the world, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you know, so I don't know if you know this one. This is also brilliant because people think Tuskegee was so long ago. But when I was speaking at rallies in Sacramento last year, I brought up that in early 1990s, the CDC, along with Kaiser Permanente, Kaiser Permanente, which is huge in California, was conducting experiments on infant inner city black and Hispanic kids under the months of 18 months of age in order to over see if they could overwhelm maternal fetal antibodies. And what were they doing? They were giving an experimental measles shot at 10 to 500 times the dose. Now wow. the UN, yeah, the CDC was doing this with John. No, you just blew me away. That You just told me something <laughs> I didn't know. Now I'm impressed. I was aware of secret vaccine and pesticide testing on inner city youth, mainly black, but, but that's uh, because they didn't, no one would stand up for them, but there's other groups as well, including killing children with pesticides. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just so insane. Look, you found the L.A. Times. Wow. Right. Uh, CDC Times. says it messed up. It erred in measles okay. study. Whoa. Yeah, erred. How try it was criminal. OK, and it wasn't just there in L.A. The CDC at the same time simultaneously was doing it with Johns Hopkins in West Africa wow. and Haiti. And wow. there were deaths. And they had to stop wow. it because of the deaths. But listen to this. So we've got now a cohort of kids who are in their late 20s who were given measles shots at 10 to 500 times the dose. And nobody's following up on them because they were probably given $100 in a pizza it's party. It's worse. It's worse, though. I just thought of this. It's the measles vaccine that we find the antibodies in the guts of mostly autistic children. Oh, my God. And then I keep wondering, why does fluoride hit blacks double bad or vaccines? But then I see some of the studies that they're actually giving more vaccines or special vaccines to the blacks that are even worse. Then I learn in mainstream news that the rich and the elites, quote, get the clean vaccines. I bet this rabbit hole goes a lot deeper. I'm sorry, doctor. I'm going to shut up. Go ahead.
Well, okay. So people, when I, when I said this at one of the rallies, people were going crazy because nobody had, nobody had heard of this. You know, it was a little article in the LA Times, like, oh, no big deal. You know, we aired, we aired. How do you air by not disclosing it's an experiment, by not, by not letting parents know you're giving 10 to 500 times the recommended dose of a new experimental vaccine? I mean, that's not an error. That is criminal behavior. And it was one article in the LA Times, and I think there was one article somewhere out east, and that was it, and then it was dropped. I mean, this is unbelievable. Can you imagine? It was kind of like when Baxter had the, the, the flu shots, and it had uh, H1N1 or, H1, or H1N5 in it. And all the homos died. Well, no, this was the one that got to the Ukraine and they tested it on ferrets and so they were all dying. And somebody at the Ukraine at the testing station caught it. But Baxter said it was a mistake and didn't want to I remember that when it killed all the ferrets, but look at this one on the Telegraph. Almost died after bird flu vaccine trial in Poland. And they said it usually only kills a couple people out of 30, but this one killed most of them. Um, I mean, it, it is, so it's really crazy, but I'll tell you that most doctors, this is a religious belief, you know? I mean, I was guilty too. I was inculcated. No, I know. You know doctors will tell you there's no problems that's made up. And I'm like, I have 500 mainstream news articles and the insert saying it. And they go, no, you don't. Yeah, it's a, so it's a, it's really akin to a religious belief in the system. You know, you believe that the CDC tells you good information. Most doctors are kind of not, not. Wow aware of how the world works in terms of how business works, right? They're not business minded in general. And so they don't understand, just like with mainstream media, I mean, 70% of their advertising money in a non-election year is pharma. You're gonna bite the hand that feeds you? I don't think so. And the CDC has a revolving door. You know, it's kind of like with the FDA whistleblower who, who exposed the Viax is issue. He said that he was set, taken aside and said, who do you think you work for? You work for the people or you work for the industry? You work for the industry. That's what's going on. I tell you, I get somebody like you on because I read hundreds of news articles a day. You start reminding me of stuff I read years ago and we pull it up. And, right. then, I, and, and then you bring up stuff I didn't even know about. And I'm just wondering, I wonder what else has never come out. I mean, I'd imagine it's probably 10 times what we know, doctor. Oh, you know, it's so it's a rabbit hole. This is what I, I when I spoke in Rhode Island, when the Department of Public Health, which was allowed to make legislation without legislators approval and mandated Gardasil for all sixth graders, boys and girls in the fall, I was immediately flown out with Diane Harper, who was one of the key architects of that vaccine and consulted for Merck. And um, it, it's it's unbelievable because most doctors are just unaware. And what I think is that it's it's a rabbit hole. So the doctors that came heard it and got incensed, not at me, at, at the system. You know, they're like, wow, I had no idea. And I understand, like, they start falling down that rabbit hole. So that's the good news is this is coming out because I had a pediatrician, one of the biggest pediatricians in Austin about five years ago, grab me and go, listen, I, I volunteer for free clinics, you know, and he goes, they were giving the old SV40 to the kids in East Austin. I can't believe it. He said, but don't quote me. You can say your doctor said it. Just don't say my name. He's since retired. But again, there's this fear, too. That's an illegal oh. vaccine. What what are they doing giving it to black youth again? I mean, this is getting really weird. I mean, this is and then and then where's the black leaders? Where are the Hispanic leaders as they're trying to give every girl in Mexico Gardasil that we know has been banned in all these countries and linked directly to sterilizing women and, and autoimmune disorders? Where are the Mexican flag waving Ford Foundation, you know, people that are beating up folks what? at Trump rallies? I mean, we really don't want you to kill your children. I mean, we really care about you. You're a human. Put down the Mexican flag for a minute and actually listen to us. Well, I actually called the lawyer for the NAACP in DC, right? So I made him aware. He was aware, he was disturbed by it, but he wouldn't do anything about it. He wouldn't say anything. Special place um, in hell. Yeah, and he's probably not even one of the worst because he's like, well, no, I know, but they know, and then they're afraid. They're hurting well, children, they're folks. They're afraid for real reason. Um, you know, like, and you know, Andy, Andy Wakefield, who's brilliant and oh my fabulous. God, yeah. You can't say enough good things about that man. I mean, he's a true gentleman and Renaissance man. And, um, and been proven right. Yes, many times over, in fact. But, you know, they ruined his life. I mean, thank God he and his wife, they are amazing and go through life in a positive way. I don't know how they did it. I don't think I could do it with all the vilification that he's suffered. Um, 
But, you know, look what happens. I mean, and worse things happen. I mean, we know that. I mean, remember the Australian government? And there's nothing you don't seem to know. Remember when they had the vaccine maker and the internal email in the lawsuit say we need to start killing these people? The anti-vax folks? Well, in Vioxx, when they when they got things through discovery, the emails, the internal emails at Merck for Viox was we need to neutralize physicians. Here's the list of physicians that need to be neutralized and you need to go to their homes if necessary. Yeah, and then strangely enough, some of them had been killed mysteriously. But hey, everybody commits suicide, folks. Nothing going on here. We'll be back. All I know is I'll be on vacation or I'll be at, on the street and I see folks that got an autistic son. I'll say, hey, is your son autistic? Oh, yes, he is. And I'll say, and most of the time they end up you know, being listeners, but they'll say, yeah, he got shots when he was 18 months, the third round, had a convulsion in the car, or they're at the hospital, or that night, uh, had a fever for four or five days, and then never talked again. But they say there's no vaccine connection. Well, in the old days, like when my uncle took a tetanus shot and almost killed him, his whole body swelled up. You know, the doctor said, no, it's a bad reaction to the tetanus shot. The insert says it. Now they're trying to say none of this exists. And I just want to encourage Dr. Tony Bark, disease-reversal.com. You can check out the books, the films, the, the information. They're on her site, the news articles. It's excellent. I just want to ask her in condensing all this, where we go from here? Because, you know, she speaks to big groups of doctors and they're waking up. They see it. A lot of members of Congress have children or grandchildren that are fine at their house one week. The next week, brain damage, never talk again. They're not going to get away with this. They think they're just going to keep propagandizing it. And, you know, why is breast cancer up a couple thousand percent in every Western country? They never ask why it's up. They say, find the cure. Well, we know it's glyphosates and other things. And, and the antibiotics, like she said, that turn off the immune system and kill our guts, just like the New York Times admitted a month ago. Wow, most cancer is communicable and most of it passes through the gut. Everything Dr. Blaylock, a brain surgeon, said 25 years ago, what Wakefield said. We know, turns out the Rockefeller Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, well, since the 20s, the Rockefellers have been obsessed with gut flora. Turns out they were way ahead of the curve. Turns out there's some evil people. Doctor, in closing, other uh, points for folks here. Just want to appreciate your work. Thank you. What other points you want to impart to people about what they oh. should know? Yeah. So, you know, what I tell people after a large lecture, everyone's like, what can we do? And I think you have to start locally with your legislators because they truly don't know anything. So in Illinois, there's a JCAR committee. It's a joint commission. And they so it's it's Congress. It's the House. I mean, it's the House. It's the Senate. And it's right and it's left. And they vote on things like mandates, like 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 rules for the ID for the Department of Public Health. You need to go. Everyone needs to go to their rep and educate them because they're okay. I mean, honestly, after doing this work poli politically, I can tell you that most legislators don't know, sh don't know much. <laughs> Sorry, I have a potty mouth. Um, That's true. They, they right, are full they really of don't. And they're spending all their time canvassing for money for their next election. That is their main concern. Totally self-centered, narcissistic people that don't give a damn about anybody, including their own kids, are all committing suicide. Well, I don't know about that, but I can tell you that I'm they don't saying, really... I'm saying, on average, a lot of these globalists are totally self-centered. They just could care less. Well, so the local, but we have to start locally because they're making the, the mandates at your state, right? You need to let them know you're not going to vote for them. You will get other people to vote in power if they don't really represent you. And you need to educate them because many of them are actually aghast when they find out. They don't know about the vaccine court. They don't know about the lack of liability. They don't know that there's a table of injuries that hasn't been updated since the vaccine court started and we added another 45 vaccines. They don't know any of this. And when they hear it, they actually actually sure. become yeah they're shocked so you know so that's the good news is the globalists yeah. are doing all this arrogantly they're just forcing us to go out and be bigger activists and take our government back absolutely and you know the more they push the more we find out i mean vaxxed would have never afforded this kind of a pr campaign and i immediately you know emailed donna and Della. i was like wow you have gotten such free pr this is brilliant and i was if tweeting, the feds wouldn't have threatened uh <laughs> The, the the places where they were going to show it, if there hadn't been pressure put on Robert De Niro, it wouldn't have the Streisand effect. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't have.
have like 150 people singing at a Tribeca on the 24th, you know, that Sunday afternoon. It would have been it. And in the meantime, man, it's gotten major exposure because methinks she does protest too much, right? I mean, it piqued interest of people who had never even heard of this and would never have heard of it, of it except if they made it into sure, a Sure, it deal. shows their arrogance. Doctor, do five more minutes with us. We got Roger Stone coming up on the latest with Trump at the campaign. He's got some of the biggest developments ever when he joins us the next hour. But five more minutes with this amazing lady. I'm Alex Jones. Our guest is with us another five minutes, Tony Bark, Dr. Tony Bark, disease-reversal.com, highly recommended by Billy Corrigan. By the way, he was here live a few weeks ago with us in studio, did a tape interview with Leanne McAdoo. I want to promote that properly, so that's going to air next Wednesday during my show. It's about a 20-minute interview, very powerful. He said even more controversial stuff during that. And, and people say, oh, he's a rock star, who cares? He's a super smart guy who knows what he's talking about, has a great spirit, and has the courage to speak out. But let me tell you, I have other big movie stars and folks on here. You think Robert De Niro had him go after him and the feds went after folks in Texas and high-level government officials not to show vaxxed? The stuff they do when you're in entertainment and you've sold 50 million records, the way they come after you is scary. And he's got the courage. So it's that courage I admire, not just the fact he's a smart guy and has great music. Uh, so finishing up with other solutions, Dr. Bark, uh, get out there, get involved, force them to act like thugs, don't be scared. We're fighting for children to not be brain damaged here. Exactly. And we're, we're fighting for children and for ourselves, for our lives, because remember, the vaccines are coming for you, for the adult. And if we don't, if we don't, you know, if we just take this line down, that's going to happen. But I want to say that underneath, well, first of all, I want to say that Billy Corgan is incredibly brilliant. And I was going to use a different word uh, than incredibly, but I can't say that on your show. But he is one of the most brilliant minds I I know. And and. and wickedly talented. Aside from that, though, let me tell you that underneath all vaccine injury and all chronic disease and all chronic pain syndromes is what I would call a dysautonomic syndrome. So the autonomic nervous system perceives itself to be an attack and it's it can be an emotional attack. It can be a physical attack, but it can be this um, environmental chemical attack. And the body goes into protect itself, which is chronic sympathetic tone, fight and flight, all the time and you can't heal in that tone. So the work that I did in my graduate school in addition to looking at vaccines was looking at first responders that are damaged because we, we have first responders coming back from war, over 30% of them are chronically damaged. And there's ways of reversing all chronic disease and damage, which is to deal with that excessive fight and flight and to get the autonomic nervous system working first and foremost. And let's just say it, those of us that engage evil all the time take it on, I know I do, we kind of get PTSD. Absolutely. What are some of those techniques to get this stuff off of a stock? Well, okay, so I use a handheld device that oddly enough was created in Russia in the Cosmonaut program about 35 years ago, and it measures electrical impedance. It's very scientific. It's actually approved in this country for you know pain and injury. I'm using it off label for many things, but I can measure impedance and see where along the sympathetic chain and acupuncture points, there is still um, excessive sympathetic tone, and I can dialogue with an electrical frequency into the anterior hypothalamus to convince the anterior hypothalamus, which is the master control, of everything in your body that you're not. By the way, but there's a, there's real science and there's kooks that misuse this. But I've got Dr. Nick Megachon with the thousands of government patents on this. That's all yes. the subject. The globalists know about this, and they admit even DARPA has been in major news. Yes. That they're quote testing waves to control us. So this stuff's going on. Yeah, electrical frequency. So the, a, a body is electrical. We're electrical. The difference between something alive and dead is actually the electricity. The chemistry comes second, and so our whole system. Our Autonomic nervous system is electrical. It has to be addressed. Aside from visiting somebody who knows how to deal with these devices, acupuncture, electrical acupuncture, homeopathy, breath work, meditation, you know, these things can help a lot. Well, we are electrochemical, and I want to have you back about that. That is intriguing. I know it about is. the Russian studies. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Disease-reversal.com. You're awesome, Dr. Bark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. Loved it. You bet. Incredible lady. All right. We got uh, Stone coming up. Stone. I'm an old sap, you could say, in the modern world. I I care about trying to be good to people. And I notice a lot of people take being nice or caring about them as weakness. Like, why is this person being nice to me? Why is this person rewarding me? Why is this person empowering me? They must be weak. Let me try to push them around. But folks like that who've been brought up in the modern system quickly find out that's not why I was trying to be nice to them. I don't know. It's just that uh, the globalists are so evil, they're so out of control, 
And they're so cold-blooded, they don't have any empathy for anyone. They really are sociopathic slash psychopathic. But so many others that serve the corrupt systems are simply afraid. And they want power. They want status. They live in denial about what they're doing. And they engage in their activities because they think they'll get temporal success out of it. The problem is your subconscious mind is debated, but it's, it's, it's agreed upon that it is many orders of magnitude stronger and more intuitive than your conscious mind, which is your limited cerebral cortex ocular focus. It's like the surface of the ocean versus the continuum of the entire body. In fact, that's one of the deepest quotes ever by Donald Trump. I don't really plan any of this, but w will you guys search engine Donald Trump on shallowness, Donald Trump's shallowness quote? Because Donald Trump is, is, is self-deprecating, he's funny, he does some things I disagree with. He's a classic alpha male, just in all of his ridiculous golden toadness. Uh, it's 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 fun. I mean, I make fun of myself all day as well. That's that's a good sign. But some of his quotes that he says off the cuff are like philosophy 2.0. And he has this quote about one of the deepest moments I ever had was when I learned to not sit there and overthink stuff and just be shallow. When I began to look at things on their surface, it was a very deep moment for me. Now, I'm paraphrasing the quote if you guys can find it. But your first approximation is generally your best because it's the giant subconscious brain and all of your accrued life knowledge and all your genetic memory, all your instincts, everything focused in in that snapshot. Just like a woman's first intuitions or, or your first impression is so important. Now, the globalists and everybody else try to have the glitzy car and the suit and it's all leverage to the hilt so that people think you're more successful than you are. There's certainly camouflage, coloration, manipulation within that paradigm, but everybody knows that first impressions are incredibly important, and the media runs that quote constantly, making fun of Donald Trump like he's the biggest buffoon in the galaxy because he said that. And it's a profound statement. There it is. And to make creative choices, I try to step back and remember my first shallow reaction. The day I realized it can be smart to be shallow was, for me, a deep experience. Now, what did Donald Trump just say right there? He just said, I go with my gut. He just said, I... I go with my instincts. What does a woman tell you? It's well known women have better intuition than men. They better, they have three times the connections between left and right hemisphere than men do and have parts of their brains men don't even have. So the whole system's about telling women what to think all day. This advertisement, that, look at this, look at that. Because see, women actually guide and run the society. Women have the kids. Women, women are the civilization. They're everything. Men are a production in the female womb of I need warriors, I need men like this. This is what I need to push the species. This is what I need to go out and do things for me and go out and 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 and, and take care of me and, and take care of the children I'm gonna have. It's like a queen ant or bee sitting in the middle of her hive. But instead you look what they do to women, telling women they're gonna empower them. Have they empowered women? No they haven't. They've done the opposite. They've taken women off the pedestal and put them in the gutter. Because they don't want women with that first approximation with all that genetic knowledge going around and going, what's my first shallow thing on this? It's not a shallow analysis. It's the entire race consciousness of the species and a whole nother set of DNA men don't even have.
What does that tell you? And that's why Hitler said, first you get the women. Then you have the children. So follow the men. First you get the women. Then you've got the children. So follow the men like dominoes falling over right into their hands. Let's play some Trump clips and I'm going to get more into this. Another little delicious jewel from Trump. Remember, the EU has come out unelected. UK didn't vote to enter it. No, just all these weird prime ministers signed deals. Treaties didn't get ratified. They're under it. They just say you're under it. NATO stands by with junk jets to attack you if you don't go along with it. For every refugee you don't let in for the Islamification, quarter million euro fine. And then what does Trump say? Another horrible, evil, radical statement from him. He backs the European Union leaving, or he, he, he backs the, the UK leaving the European Union. But that's just a common sense thing. They make almost 90% of their laws. The EU bureaucracy is unelected. It's involved in all this corruption. It's a sick joke. Why would you want to be part of it? Let's play that clip. I think the EU, with what's happened with the migration, and a lot of people are saying that the EU is sort of the one that, you know, the ones that are pushing it. Uh, I think the migration has been a horrible thing for Europe. I looked at Germany. I looked at different countries, even parts of Sweden, where they never had a problem in their life, and they're going through hell right now. Uh, you look at what's going on with that. A lot of that was pushed by the EU. I would say that they're better off without it, personally, but I'm not making that as a recommendation, just my feeling. I know Great Britain very well. I know you know the country very well i have a lot of investments there uh i would say that they're better off without it but i want them to make their own decision and of course they're better off not having a giant bureaucracy sitting on top of them that's from the wall street journal of course they're better off not having a group that wants to undermine them and social engineer with with the head of the eu migration program saying europe is racist because it's white let's get rid of it peter sutherland no, you just want to get rid of it because once you've sunk it, everybody else will be poor and you can rule over us because you're tax exempt, you criminal. He is a criminal. Let's go to Trump uh, responds to the never Trumpers, the Bushes and the and the and the the, 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 the Trotskyite crystals and everybody. I mean, what a joke. It's a badge of courage that this collection of scum is against Trump. If the Bushes and William Crystal were endorsing Trump, I'd be against him. <laughs> Let's go to it. Never Trump. You know why it's never Trump? Because I'm going to stop the gravy train for all these consultants and all of these people that are ripping off our country. It's called the gravy train. So, never Trump. By the way, a lot of these never Trumps are calling up, uh, Mr. Trump, I admire you greatly, sir. We'd love to join the campaign. I said, didn't you do a horrible ad of me two weeks ago? And weren't you on a show where you said horrible things? I said, how do you pivot from that to saying you think I'm a wonderful person? He said, no problem, sir. You know why? Politicians, they can do that. I have a hard time doing it. They can do it. He has a hard time doing it, doesn't he? Uh, they're just so scared of him, folks, because for all of his aggressiveness and there's a little bit of gangsterish stuff in there. I don't mean literal gangster, but, you know, that, that's a male attribute. It's be like a rhinoceros. Trump just doesn't like America being screwed over. He's like, why, why should we make these weird deals? Because that's globalism, Trump, and he knows that. And he's exposing that. We have another clip coming up after break. The coal miners endorse Trump over Hillary's incredible eyes. He will destroy Hillary. They've been wrong about everything else about Trump, but they say, oh, he's going to lose big to Hillary. Some made-up poll said, let me tell you. All we do is win with Trump, even if he loses, because he's injecting real issues and promoting nationalism, and the seeds that are being planted now are going to grow into mighty oaks. Stay with us. So well, there is a reality, and the globalists don't want people to be aware of it. Hillary came out with Obama and said, we're going to bankrupt coal, we're going to get rid of it. And the coal miner said, you said you were going to bankrupt us. She goes, I never said that, sweetie pie. I'm sorry what you heard me say sounded like that. I love you. Well, they're not buying it. They've come out uh, as a national union and endorsed Trump.
Let's go ahead and play that clip. Uh, coal miners endorse Donald Trump. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. On behalf, on behalf of the best coal miners, on behalf of the best coal miners in the world who mine the cleanest and safest and most environmentally sound coal in the world, we're so pleased to introduce to him, endorse you today, and wish you the best of luck and vow to support you the best we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's this whole globalist agenda to screw everyone over, and all Donald Trump wants to do is stop the policies that are meant to deindustrialize us. That's all he's doing. He just has to not be our enemy, and we'll do great. By the way, though, that's the same for every other country. Multinationals have come in put it on, right? and gotten countries to do things that are against their people's interests. <laughs> That's all a nation state is, is a group to defend that another group doesn't come in and take over what you've developed and what you've built. Because I'm, I'm an anarchist, at, you know, down at bottom, but in a complex world with seven and a half million people, you got to have something to protect what you've built. And I, I like the Swiss model where everybody's armed and got grenade launchers and they've got armored fortresses every few miles that if the citizens need to go in with a key and open it up, they got missile launchers and anti-aircraft guns and 50 caliber rifles. Of course, you know Switzerland has the lowest crime rate in the world next to Japan. No one's sure who's got a lower one. It's probably Switzerland. And every citizen just has access who doesn't have a criminal record, but they have a very low crime rate, to armored redoubts, whether you're in a valley or a mountainside, and they're just full of weapons. One time, Rob Dew, uh, when he lived in Switzerland for a year, a couple seasons there, and there's snow seasons, a lot of Americans go over there that are into skiing and you know work there for basically, to be, just to be paid for the room and board to ski. After college, he did that, and he talked about one time he was coming down with some locals, and they said, let's go over here and get something to eat. And they pull in, they open the big door, big iron door, and it's like all these weapons locked up and all these explosives, but also food. The local said, let's have some soup. I'm going from memory, but he told me that story like five years ago, but he ought to come in here sometime and talk about that. But, oh, trusting your citizens with grenade launchers? And they have the lowest crime rate and nobody's invaded them for 400 years? It all happened because of William Tell, you know, the guy that had to put the apple on his kid's head and shoot it with a crossbow. That's a true story. They'd sent in basically an Austrian-Hungarian empire. It, was, it predated that, but a Germanic group had come in and taken over Switzerland. And they were taking people's women. They were putting kids into slavery. They were uh, taking people's property. And William Tell had to go back and get his kid away from him. And they said, all right, shoot the apple off his head. That's a true story. You can have your kid back. You know what happened after he got his kid back? He slaughtered a whole bunch of them. See, that's the ethos of Switzerland. We need to get back to that, folks. And what do they have? Highest standard of living in the world. Beautiful country. Sovereign, run by their cantons. Their states come together once a year and run the federal government. Nobody dares invade them. And every mile, there's a cave with rocket launchers and weapons ready. The citizens are the government. They are the force. They don't need some big giant army because anybody that came in there would be deader than a hammer. The United States copied Switzerland and the Netherlands. The Netherlands got rid of their Swiss model. The Swiss had their model set up because William Tell's experience but after that, the Dutch continually had pirates basically robbing their ports. And so they said, we're going to have what we call night watches. So all the different ports built their own private little castles with cannons and weapons and everything else and had militias. And the piracy stopped within a few decades. So after 100 years, they got along with everybody pretty good. So they got rid of it. In fact, you can Google a Rembrandt called Night Watch, and it shows the Night Watch, like 50 guys with a little kid, and he's got a weapon as well.
They're all sitting there with their blunderbuss, their cannons, the rest of it, sitting right out front in the night watch right there at the dock, their little castle with all their weapons, drinking beer, sitting back waiting for any pirates to try to come in. The answer is arm the good people and watch tyranny evaporate. Rob Dew, we're waiting for Roger Stone. He's getting to his computer, came in, and he said, yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll finish the story. You've forgotten part of it. It was better than that. When they ended up staying the night, I guess, when they have been up skiing, uh, when he was in Switzerland, in one of the armored redoubts. So, Rob, uh, briefly, we're talking about William Tell, uh, the situation going on there in Switzerland, lowest crime rate in the world, totally sovereign, never invaded in 400 years, all because they had an uprising against... Um, basically a nearby country coming in and taking them over. They said, never again, we're going to arm ourselves. Uh, and they watched tyranny disappear like phantoms at dawn. Rob, dude? It's, that's right, Alex. And so I stayed in a small village where a ski resort was. And if we went out at night down to the town, we would have to stay overnight. In, um, it, it was basically in a basement underneath, I'd say, a fourplex. There was some apartments on top. But you go in. It was a giant bomb shelter. You had to open the doors about this thick. And they had some beds set up and some storable food there, which, you know, we just kind of left that alone. We used the beds. There was three rooms. And then they had a hallway next to that. And in there was little cages that were locked up. And in each cage, we, it was me and my buddy. He's, we were both from Louisiana, so we're, you know, into hunting and all that. And he goes, check this out. Because he had been there a couple weeks before I was. He goes, look at this. And each one had a machine gun and a helmet, I guess a vest with, you know, uh, uh, clips. Or magazines, I guess that's the correct term. But every single one of them had one in it, and that was and and we asked one of the locals, "What's that for?" They said, "Well, if anybody comes in and tries to attack us, we just go get our guns and are ready to." You know, we've all gone to the army. Everybody goes and serves. I think it it when they turn eighteen, at least uh, one or two years in the army, so they can uh, be prepared for civilian defense if anything's ever going to happen. And that's the best civilian defense is. Um, you know, training people and then sending them back out in the world with their arms so they can be ready if anything ever happens, especially and, and, in a country and, like And I would be for that maybe a tax exemption or tax credits to be able to go and have like free training for everybody. I don't want to have it organized. They'll turn it into social justice warrior globalism now. They're trying to push that. But the Swiss model really is part of where we got our model. We should go back to it. It's the way to go. And I've talked to families who's been over there and been in some of their bigger redoubts uh, where you'll have like the local who's in charge of it. You go in there, it's like, you know, armored vehicles, rockets, missile launchers. I mean, they are ready. Yeah, this was a small village I was in called Sorenberg. Not, you know, they had a grocery store, three three bars, and uh, a lot of happy Swiss people. And, you know, no crime that I could see, no poverty. Uh, what, what, you know, it was interesting. You were talking about being natural and getting out. As I was taking the train from Zurich into that area, they had little little uh, garden houses alongside where people would go on the weekends and garden and do things out in nature. So they had those all along, and I, I thought that was really interesting that, you know, we don't really have anything like that here in this country. You know, people, I guess, go out to their camps or whatnot, but everybody had these set up, and it was just their little plot of land where they can garden. They, they were all beautiful. It looked like little hobbit houses just on the, you know, right next to the train tracks. Well, we're going to be focusing more on this. Big study out. We have Stone yet? Almost. A big study out uh, by Psychology Post. This is out of the Environmental and Behavior Journal. A uh, big study uh, that just walking in the woods a little bit makes you happy, releases a lot of key chemicals in your brain, lower stress, uh, just it's amazing. And look, the globalists know this. That's why they're trying to keep us from doing this. It's total control. We're here to expose it. It's that simple. What we're bringing back is not rocket science, folks. This is normal human activity, this broadcast, okay? Thanks, Rob, dude. Yep. Appreciate that. Roger Stone joining us with Bombshell Info in a moment. Uh, before I go any further... Speaking of gardening, we're well into the spring. You got time to have a spring, uh, fall garden coming up next year, not just the summer garden. We got three planting periods in most areas of the country right now. Everyone should go to InfoWarsStore.com and get 10% off on all preparedness goods. Shortwave radios uh, that are solar powered and crank, very lowest price, high quality. Super high quality water filtration systems that you don't just use in emergencies. You stop drinking the glyphosate fluoride filled water now. Very best systems out there. G Shock watches. The storable food specials will end Sunday. I'm not extending it, I promise. That's it. 30 to 40% off on that. Super high quality. Infowarslife.com is for the nutraceuticals. We've got 10% uh, off on that because I also see that as a preparedness item, whether it's the liver shield or anthroplex or 
X2 or colloidal silver or DNA force. And there's 10% off on top of that when you sign up for auto ship and free shipping on all orders. $50 or more. And I've got to say, we have never been selling more Hillary for prison shirts than we are now. We have a new limited edition shirt. We have never been selling more of these than now. I don't know why, but, but I tell you, people really want to see Hillary Clinton indicted. And that would be absolutely wonderful because she is such a criminal. Those are available as well at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Now, Roger Stone joins us. He doesn't normally come on, but once a week, a very, very busy man. Uh, but he has traveled to New York to ferret out more info, to find out in the campaign what's going on, the devastating victory for populism and nationalism in Indiana a few days ago. Uh, the Bush is coming out saying they won't endorse him. Wow, that'd be like Satan saying they won't endorse him. All these wonderful things happening. Such an exciting time right now. Uh, Donald Trump doubling down, saying Britain should leave the EU, promising to not shut off our coal mines, uh, saying he'll, he'll repeal Obamacare. I've never been more proud of supporting Donald Trump. We're going to cover all the latest developments. He says some big breaking bombs he's going to drop right now. We'll also ask about a report I got from other insiders that we know in the campaign that uh, without Trump knowing, they may have snuck in a guy connected to Goldman Sachs, but who isn't connected to Goldman Sachs when it comes to finance? We're going to look at that uh, as well with Roger Stone of StopTheSteal.org. And congratulations, everybody. They may still try to steal it, but that's now a very uh, remote option. I'd, I'd say maybe 5% chance when they were guaranteed to do it. He was the first guy 11 months ago on the show with Richard Reeves, Roger Stone was to raise the alarm because you got organized, because you got involved, because you pointed out it was wrong to do. The arrogant previses of the world have now been backed into a corner, but the fight is continuing. Let's now go to Roger Stone with breaking intel. Thank you, sir, for joining us in your busy schedule on this Friday. Alex, I'm delighted to be here. It is a, it's a whirlwind day. Uh, it is uh, incredible to me to watch the mainstream media continue to focus on the never Trump group, a handful of people, less than 10% of the Republican party. And then they completely missed the story of the millions of new voters, new donors, new workers, people who've never been involved in the process before who are flocking to the Trump banner. Uh, you know, I, uh, I was uh, fortunate to speak uh, to Donald today and you know, those conversations are private and proprietary, but I must tell you, he is really pumped up. He is really excited. He had a phenomenal crowd in West Virginia yesterday. Now, he makes a very good point. The West Virginia primary is over. The nomination phase is over. And still, there are thousands of people turning out to give voice to this revolution. So I, I have never seen anything like this in the 40 years that I have been involved in American politics. Alex, this is a, Trump is a force of nature. Uh, he is an unabashed nationalist. He believes in America uh, in terms of sovereignty and American power. Uh, and uh, I have concluded after yesterday that while he is more than happy to take money from Wall Street, and while he is more than happy to recognize that Wall Street will play both sides of the street, that they'll fund Hillary at the same time they fund Trump, Trump is above all a businessman. He would be foolish to turn down that money. But given that I have known him for almost 40 years, anybody who thinks Donald Trump can be bought is, killing, is kidding themselves. He is his own man. His views have been set for 30 years on trade, on immigration, on our absurd fiscal policies. Um, he is still uh, absolutely, I think, uh, in the camp of those who recognize the country needs radical reform, and you're not going to get it from the current two-party leadership. Roger Stone, you said it. The populism, the, the almost three million new voters coming in, even better than Reagan at this point, they are so scared of his populism. They've lied about him every step of the way. They've been proven totally wrong. And now these arrogant people that ran the Republican Party in the ground, that launched all these evil wars, they tell us that they say we can't have him. What an arrogant group. And look at how their attempt to steal blew up in their face. That con game didn't go well. I smell the death 
uh, uh, politically of the hijackers of the Republican Party. Beck and others are trying to say he spells the death of the party. No, Trump and populism spells the resurrection of it, in my view. The, the smart people in the Republican Party have recognized the millions who are coming to our banner. Uh, there have been nine million people have voted for Donald Trump for the Republican nomination. That is the largest number of voters ever garnered by any Republican nominee for president in history, including the great Ronald Reagan. This is, this is a groundswell. And uh, I think it is uh, uh, interesting that, uh, that Speaker Ryan allows today that uh, he may not support Trump. The manifestation of that, which I can report directly is, Alex, there's an insurrection today in the House among the backbenchers who want to support Trump. We're trying to figure out what's wrong with their leader. Uh, Trump was fielding phone calls from congressmen all morning who are coming on board, who are uh, who want Trump to visit their districts and their states, uh, and who He are would turbocharge them all, but Ryan and the rhinos do not want access to the other Republicans of this superstar because Trump with populism and the libertarians could take the whole party over. Oh, what a dream. Yeah, I mean, one major plus today, as you know, George uh, Bush uh, 43 and Bo George Bush 41 announcing that they will not support Trump. This, I view, is a major plus. Those are two failed presidencies. George W. Bush crashed our economy and wasted money and blood on a pointless war in which America's These violence. are two New World Order minions. Let me ask you this then. What are the threats that listeners should be aware of? What should we do to continue moving this forward? What do you expect Hillary to do? You know, what's the next hurdles to get over here? Well, let's first, let's talk about the convention because I have, as I'm sure you have, Alex, been contract, contacted by many patriots who are saying, are you sure we should stand down? Are you sure we aren't going to be subject to some sneak attack by Ted Cruz and his Bush family patrons, Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan, Paul Singer, and the rest of the these answer is, let me guess, do not stand down because the, the sneak attack will be Soros people trying to dominate and control. We need to totally overwhelm them with patriot numbers as a show of support. Is that a good statement? That is exactly right. And uh, I spoke to the organizers of what was the Stop the Steal rally, which is now going to become a unity and victory rally and alex they're very very excited about your speaking there in cleveland uh there's no evidence that the groundswell of people coming to cleveland has been abated oh no this is where we're going to face the goblins of soros more than ever folks now that he has clearly dominated ahead of time your numbers need to be bigger in my gut level of, uh, analysis now more than ever it's certainly possible and i think it's important for patriots to show up and to turn out. Let's take nothing for granted. Now, I do think, uh, based on meetings I was in today, that the key committees of the convention, rules, credentials, platform, are gonna fall uh, into the hands of the Trump operation. I think it gets harder and harder to pull some backroom steal. The platform now becomes more important because we want that to be a nationalist document that reflects the views of Donald Trump, not a neocon document that represents uh, the failed policies of the Bushes. Beautiful. What about VP? So many folks are saying get the governor, the former governor of Oklahoma, who's a woman. I'm not for gimmicks, but she's a great lady. Wouldn't that be a good coup against Hillary's, uh, you know, female uh, vote claim? Well, uh, you know, once one thing that. President Richard Nixon once told me was when looking for a running mate, don't try to find somebody who can help you. You'd be lucky to find somebody who doesn't hurt you. That is, of course, ironic in view of the fact that both of the running mates that he chose, Spiro Agnew and Henry Cabot Lodge, turned out to be disasters that hurt him in the 68 and the 1960 campaigns. I think you can get too clever here. The good news is that, that Donald Trump, without the prospect of a contested convention has much, much broader latitude in who he chooses. He doesn't have to go check the boxes. 
uh, pick a woman, pick a Hispanic, pick a career politician. Uh, and therefore, I got the impression, and he holds this very close to his vest, uh, that he is going to look at a broad cross-section of people that perhaps we haven't considered yet. Now, you do have to be uh, cognizant uh, of the need for vetting. Uh, the only advantage of taking somebody who has run for president in the most recent cycle, a John Kasich, a, a Marco Rubio, is that they're fully vetted. I really don't get the impression that that is where he's headed. So when you I, say, because boy, I'm salivating here for the exclusiveness of this, when you say he's looking into a section no one ever looked into, is that military, is that industry? I mean, please tell us what that section is. Well, I think it could be military because when he said, I want somebody from the political system, I think what he actually meant was I need somebody who knows how the government runs. That didn't necessarily mean an elected politician. Uh, so it could be for somebody from the military. I think that, that Trump is very, very shrewd. He understands that two business people on a ticket with, uh, with no government experience is probably not the best uh, prescription for government. And he wants somebody sure. who can navigate the walls of government to implement his program over the objections. Sure. Of Isn't Chris Christie geographically too close, though? I, I, don't, I think Chris Christie is, uh, would be the wrong choice for a couple of reasons. First of all, the George Washington Bridge scandal is probably not over. The people charged in that scandal are going to go to trial shortly. There's also a very significant civil trial. Uh, and it remains to be seen until those two trials are over what Chris Christie's vulnerabilities may or may not be. Geographically, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I, I think uh, it, it would send the wrong signal. I think Trump is thinking much broader than that. Uh, now, we could all be surprised. Only he is going to make this choice. He's not a man who tips his hand in advance. But I, I think he's looking at a broad cross-section of people, not necessarily elected politicians. Well, if I had to give Trump advice, I would tell him go into areas where the social justice warriors are attacking that continues to discredit them and to go where folks are waving foreign flags and screaming, you know, kill Donald Trump. I, I mean, undoubtedly, our footage and other people's footage of that, I think, pushed him way over the edge to have the communist Chinese and the Pope and all these foreigners just screaming and yelling and telling us what to do. And our own president telling the UK, you've got to stay in the, the EU. I mean, people are sick of our countries being run by outside interest. Well, I also have to tell you that a major concern for the overall Trump campaign is, of course, that Hillary has a well-oiled financial machine. She is drowning in Soros money and other illicit and in some cases illegal money. Uh, and Trump has run a completely grassroots campaign that, as you know, he's largely funded out of his own wallet. So they must very quickly ramp up a financing operation. Now, there's even more news uh, about this group, the Great America PAC. Uh, and I want to warn Trump financial donors and those who want to help. This PAC is a scam. Yesterday, Jesse Benton, former uh, aide to Ron Paul and Rand Paul, was convicted of bribery in Iowa for bribing voters uh, and bribing elected officials. Wow, I didn't know that. He was convicted? He was convicted. You can find that in the Washington Post. Wow, he's and, involved in this? Wow. Yes. Uh, Ed Rollins. Never liked him. Ed Rollins, uh, who recently signed on, your viewers may not know this, but his daytime job is working for Teneo. Teneo is the Bill and Hillary connected lobbying firm wow. run by Doug Ban, who is, you know, essentially Bill Clinton's bag man. So uh, uh, the chairwoman of this organization, the Great America PAC, Amy Kramer, resigned today uh, over what she said were financial shenanigans and the fact that... Ben okay, well, I know you've been criticizing it for weeks and Trump's people have, so so that looks to be sinking now. I know Trump doesn't do real PACs. He needs some to protect himself. Um, you've done one to promote free speech, not really a PAC. Um, but so where do people support Trump? Just buy the, the ball caps or? Well, it, look, it remains to be seen. This morning he gave an interview in which he basically conceded super PACs are a necessary evil and that he has a lot of people out there that want to support him and that he really can't tell them what to do. Uh, to me, that means that uh, that individual citizens need to move forward and act. So it's simple. If you like sovereignty, if you like lower taxes, 
if you like getting off the coal mines back, if you like cheaper energy, if you want to put America first, or at least on an equal playing field, support Trump, uh, and, and he says, I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do, as long as he doesn't go back on his pledges, I don't see that as an issue. Rock solid, Alex, rock solid. Donald Trump is not going to abandon Trumpism. Anybody on Wall Street who thinks that Trump can be bought or bullied. No, no, that's why they're so scared of him. I get it. They're, they're more scared than ever. So let me ask you this then. What about the story? I called you yesterday. You were going to New York. You didn't know yet, but I have my sources and I looked it up. The guys connected to Goldman Sachs, the Koch brothers, uh, George Soros. I mean, I know when you get in politics, they're all connected to it. And Trump's never has been. That's why he's such an outsider. But what about this new finance head? You weren't sure at the time. An hour later, it turned out that was his new finance head. Uh, exclusive Koch Soros insiders attempt to take over Trump campaign. Do, do you know anything about this? Well, I learned about it as you did, but uh, as I say, now that I have uh, been over to Trump Tower and had a number of conversations, I'm entirely comfortable. Trump is using them. They're not using him. Trump is going to take the Wall Street money. But if the boys on Wall Street think they're buying anything, they don't understand Donald Trump. He, he is not a guy you can buy. So hedge fund managers are going to pay a higher tax rate, Alex. He's not going to give up his opposition to these. Yeah, that's why he's so mad at them. Well, because they've, they've already had it basically tax exempt with this with this Irish shuffle or whatever that stuff is where they go offshore. I mean, that is fair. They pay taxes if they, I mean, yeah. Well, and the, and the treatment of carried interest for the hedge fund donors. These guys gave Jeb Bush $100 million to stop Trump, and they failed. And in the end, Jeb Bush ended up emulating Donald Trump's position on how hedge fund managers should be taxed. That is great irony. I've never seen them not give to both sides. I mean, and now if they get forced to go give to Trump, that is going to be sick. No, the great part is they think they're conning him. He's conning them. Donald Trump can't be conned. He's too smart for that. So he you've talked to him and he said, yeah, I've got some of the best managers. I'm going to open the floodgates up, but he's not going to even look at the donations then. They're just going to pour in. He's going to use them. Yeah, I don't think he has any choice. We're up against a multi-billion dollar effort by Hillary and Bill Clinton and their, and their many financial tentacles. So I think he has to operate within the law. He's going to have to take campaign funds, which now, by the way, all go to the Republican Party. They all go to the Victory Fund. But any special interest who thinks you can buy a piece of Donald Trump by donating they're going to be very, very... I was about to say, what about that problem with the leadership still saying they want to kill you know, kill him politically, and then money people give go to them? I mean, Paul Ryan, just I'm so sick of him. Yeah, I agree. We've only, got, we've only got two minutes left. I appreciate you popping in with us and giving us these exclusives. What are the other bombshells? Any other big Ted bits, uh, Mr. Stone? Well, uh, it's interesting that uh, new polling we have looked at shows that the gap between... Uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump just within the last week has closed to single digits. So the mainstream media claim that Trump is hopelessly behind. He can't possibly make up this ground. That narrative is entirely false. Supporters of Trump, patriots, free thinkers, don't be daunted by these by these poll numbers. Trump is well in range and he has gained substantially since the Indiana primary. So I'm more bullish than ever. And here's the things I like. The polling that I have looked at, Trump is running substantially ahead of where Romney and McCain ran among African But if he attacks her, she's weak. It'll destroy her. No one ever attacks her. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about that whatsoever. Donald Trump completely understands her great vulnerabilities, her abuse of women, her disastrous tenure as Secretary of State. Benghazi. Fiasco in Benghazi. The, whole, the entire... Uh, deposing of Gaddafi in Libya. And then, then there's the, the Clinton Foundation, a slush fund for grifters. Sure, when uh, you talk to him, though, I would caution him. People know she was with Obama, and they created him to a certain extent. Go after Fast and Furious. Go after IRS persecution. Just hit her with everything. It's all her fault. The derivatives, the scams of the 90s. Destroy them. Just, just hit her on every front. Bring her down. Uh, and I tell you, it's good news. The FBI is getting closer to her. What's your word on that? I mean, they're talking to all her girlfriends right now. Yeah, I mean, the real question here is, do uh, Huma Abedin and, uh, and Cheryl Mills take the fall? Now, if you listen to Hillary's operation, they'll tell you she's not even under investigation, that we must be delusional. Uh, when my friend Judge Napolitano, who is a great fan of yours, Alex, goes on and lays this out, 
The clowns at Media Matters for America insist that she's not even under investigation. What, what planet do these fellows live on? So, you know, I think justice is going to be served one way or another, and that's a steamer trunk on her back. Let me just say this. Trump completely understands her vulnerabilities. He knows that he has got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to issues that he can raise about her past conduct, her integrity, and, and her disastrous public record. She is not going to know what hit her. Hillary Clinton's not going to know what hit her. Roger Stone, have a great week, and I'll leave you working hard. God bless you, my friend. Wow, Thanks. exciting times. Any way you slice it, this is the ultimate political war game of the century. Total blood sport to the death politically. Fourth hour coming up. I'll do five more and throw the baton to our next. You know, I covered a lot of the news today. I didn't get to some of it, but I tell you, this whole thing with Paul Ryan. Uh-huh. Sorry, I'm singing along with the song. Paul Ryan, how Ryan decided to ditch Trump, Politico, and Paul Ryan's not going to support him, and Bush isn't going to support him, and Bush Sr. isn't going to support him. Everybody knows I love Ron Paul, and I get his purest views, so I respect him saying he doesn't support Trump because of some of the policies Trump stands for that I disagree with as well. Just for integrity in elections and the fact the power structure is totally against him, I really do think Ron Paul should come out and just for the populist views to audit the Federal Reserve, say, I support Trump on these points and just have basically a limited endorsement. That would be so good for Ron Paul to do. I understand if Trump goes sideways on us, then you say, oh, well, Ron Paul wasn't perfect. Nobody's perfect, people, but we're in the arena here. This is death battle with the globalists. Trump is only exposing tyranny, anti-nationalist garbage, globalist garbage, and then if he goes sideways on us, we throw him in the ditch like an old shoe. He's only popular because he's promoting things that are common sense that have been shuddered and demonized and ignored and bastardized. The, the, the tyrants hate his guts because of what he's saying. Someone at that stature with this level of media coverage, it is coffin nails to their agenda. It is un precedented on so many fronts and that's all I'm saying it is a great time to be alive when the EU unelected bureaucracy wants to fine the citizens a quarter million euros that's what the governments have to pay if they don't take in an unvetted refugee from some war-torn hellhole in an old part of a plan to balkanize Europe meanwhile this is in Breitbart 27 lawmakers warn Obama against transferring impads. He already did, too late, to Syrian rebels. Jerusalem on Wednesday, Representative John Conyers and Representative Ted Yoho. Yoho, Yoho, it's off to work we go. <laughs> Sorry, that's Snow White. And 25 other members of Congress sent a bipartisan letter to President Obama stating their opposition to the transfer of man portable air defense systems to the Syrian rebels. They've already been transferring. The letter was direct response to a Wall Street Journal article last month reporting on CIA plans to possibly arm moderate Syrian rebels with more advanced weaponry. They already did it. And they already got them. And they've already been shooting down Syrian aircraft and Russian aircraft. But the Russians have got flares and other stuff that defeats it. So they want to move in even bigger systems. They tried to cover this four or five months ago. Remember the headline was like, somehow... ISIS built Stinger missiles, aren't they geniuses? And you read the article, it meant they recharge batteries. Aren't they smart? David Knight's coming up. We end the special that I extended one week this Sunday. 30 to 40% off. 30 is the lowest discount. 40 is the highest on all the high-quality storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right there. 10% off all other preparedness items. That includes nutraceuticals, in my view. That's part of preparedness, X2. The colloidal silver, DNA force, super male vitality sold out, but Anthroplex is back in. It's, it's excellent as well. Similar formula, just, it's dry-based, plus less expensive, but it's still organic. InfoWarsLife.com for all those. And free shipping on orders of $50 or more and 10% additional off when you sign up for AutoShip. A lot of specials, so make sure you examine all that at checkout. Thank you all for your support. All right, David Knight's coming in in three minutes. Let
Welcome to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Radio Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to be taking your calls this hour because I'd like to get some of your feedback on what's developing in the aftermath of Trump being the presumptive nominee. And as we see the GOP elite hardening its position, the number is 800-259-9231. That's 800-259-9231. Before we get into the news, I want to pass on something that could be very, very valuable to you if you've just been given a pain prescription. This is a very in-depth report from the LA Times. I haven't had time to read the entire thing. This is like 30 pages printed out, folks. But they go into a very in-depth investigation of OxyContin. I know a lot of people have become addicted. A lot of people have died. We had Chris Christie talk about the most successful guy in his law school class. Uh, the guy with a lot of charisma, success, became a partner. He lost everything because he got addicted to pain-killing uh, drugs as he injured his back as a jogger. Here's the title. If you want a description of, you want a description of hell, OxyContin's 12-hour problem. And here's the gist of it. Purdue Farmer, they point out, uh, launched OxyContin two decades ago with a bold marketing claim. They said one dose relieves pain for 12 hours, more than twice as long as other generic medications. Patients would no longer have to wake up in the middle of the night to take their pills. Now, they say the stunning success that they had with OxyContin masks a fundamental problem. For some people, it doesn't last for 12 hours. Some people have a different reaction to this drug. And, of course, it's a chemical cousin of heroin. It's an opiate. And when it doesn't last, they say, patients can experience excruciating symptoms of withdrawal, including an intense craving for the drug. And they say the identification of this problem offers new insight into why so many people have become addicted to OxyContin, one of the most abused pharmaceuticals in U.S. history. So... Whenever somebody prescribes a drug for you, you ought to do some research for whatever it is, okay? Especially if it's a prescription drug by the pharmaceutical companies because the doctors hand these things out like candy. And they will assure you, oh, yeah, they're fine. Because typically what they do is they just read the literature from the drug companies. Do your own research. You need to be your second opinion. So one of the first places you need to start is if you or a loved one in your family has been prescribed OxyContin, go take a look at this L.A. Times story. It's a very in-depth article. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but I just gave you the gist of it. For some people, it doesn't last that long. And for those people for whom it doesn't last as long, they get higher highs and deeper troughs, okay? And that creates the cycle of addiction that ultimately ends in death. For so many people, uh, either a drug overdose or a suicide after they have lost everything, they can't function in society, as Chris Christie talked about. It's uh, When we look at the drug situation, I look at the DEA and the FDA. Uh, the question is, where does the federal government get the authority for this? Please tell me, and I'll keep mentioning this. I know some of you who listen are getting tired of this, but I don't ever hear anybody agreeing or disagreeing with me. There's just crickets. It's like we had an amendment to the Constitution so they could prohibit alcohol, and we had another one to undo that amendment. Where is the amendment for them to prohibit anything, including prescription drugs? Why should that be a federal law that I need to have a doctor prescribe this stuff for me? It didn't used to be that way in America. Prior to uh, the early 20th century, you could go into a drugstore, you could get anything. They put cocaine in Soda pop, okay, that's where Coca-Cola comes from, Coke. Uh, so where do we have the constitutional authority for that? I mean, states can do it. We have states that have still have laws restricting uh, the use of alcohol when you can purchase it, that sort of thing. Uh, you can debate that at your state level as to whether or not you think that's a good thing or not. There is no rationale, there is no constitutional basis for the federal government uh, prohibiting anything, folks. And if they're going to do it, they need a constitutional amendment like they did for alcohol. And if they don't, and until they do, then all this talk that we hear from conservatives about uh, following behind the Constitution, we see this from the never Trump people. It's like, well, he needs to say where he is on the Constitution. It's like, you guys are a bunch of frauds. Okay, you've supported the war on drugs for decades, for over 40 years. And understand conservatives conservative voters, because maybe the politicians understand this, 
It was a U.N. agenda that they are enforcing. And when we look at other issues like this, here, this situation with the pissing contest between the trainees and, and other people over the bathrooms, okay, now the feds are getting involved in it. Now we've got the Department of Justice uh, threatening to uh, withhold federal funding for school systems, especially university systems, under Title IX in North Carolina. They've just received a threatening letter from the feds. This is the tranny tyranny. I think we ought to start calling these people the gay KK because that's the way they operate. All right. This is a situation that should be decided by the people of the state. You don't like it? Don't go to North Carolina. Stay in New York. Stay in California where you can do whatever you want to with your bathrooms. Okay. But this is not a federal issue. And it just shows how the government can use the money that they print with the Fed to blackmail people. You want to talk about getting hooked on a drug? All the state governments are hooked on federal funding like some people are hooked on OxyContin, okay? It gives them this feeling of euphoria, but then they hold a gun to their heads because there's, there's strings attached to this. Now, the governor is saying this is just one interpretation by one agency. And here's a statement from the lieutenant governor in North Carolina, Dan Forrest. He says, to use our children and their educational futures as pawns in order to advance an agenda that will ultimately open up those same children to exploitation at the hands of sexual predators is by far the sickest example of the depths the Obama administration will stoop to fundamentally transform our nation, quote unquote. What I see missing here is any understanding of the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. He should be saying, where do you have the authority to dictate to us what our bathrooms are going to be like? Okay, this is not a federal issue and they need to argue it on that basis. As we see the election results and as we see uh, people pulling back and uh, talking, uh, starting to sink in on the GOP establishment, <laughs> the uh, sudden uh, nomination of Donald Trump being the presumptive nominee. We see Rick Perry now coming out and backing Donald Trump, saying he's open to the vice presidency. But we've seen both of the Bushes, as Alex and Roger Stone were saying in the last hour, saying they're not going to endorse Trump. They're not going to uh, most likely go to the convention. It's like, great. What could be greater than that? Well, what's even better than that is that Mitt Romney and uh, uh, McCain are probably not going to go either, probably not going to endorse. And it's like, that's super. Because you know, <laughs> these people should be pariahs to the GOP, just like Jimmy Carter was for decades to the Democrats. Go back a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks. It was April the 26th. And this was after you'd had... Donald Trump win all of the states in the Northeast. There was six in a row that he won decisively, uh, well over 50 percent, close to 60 percent in all those states. And of course, Ted Cruz not only lost, but came in third place in all but one of those states. And we have this guy, Stephen Hayes, who is an establishment Republican, one of the never Trump guys. He went to the Weekly Standard, Billy Crystal's publication. Again, that's spelled with an A, weekly with an A. Uh, he said he was having a difficult time after those northeastern wins. And he said, uh, they're going to start, the GOP elites are going to handle this by looking for a third party candidate if Cruz can't win in Indiana. Well, Cruz didn't win in Indiana. He got stomped in Indiana. He dropped out. And now what are they doing? They're looking for a third party candidate. And there's Bill Crystal with the Weekly Standard. We got an article from Kurt Nimmo on Infowars.com saying, uh, Bill Crystal is desperately seeking an establishment insurgent alternative to Trump, somebody that can basically counterpose him. And I don't know where he's going to do this. Is Ben Sass or somebody else, are they going to do that at the convention? Is that still in play, they think? Are they going to try to do this as a third party? Because we see now, and of course, the Libertarian Party is not going to hold their nomination convention until May 30th. Is Ben Sass going to run down there and jump into the uh, race for the Republican Party? Are we going to have some other GOP establishment guy uh, go in there? The LP has something that's very valuable. They always make sure they get on the ballot in all 50 states. There's not uh, any other party that has done it to that extent for the number of years that they have done it, to my knowledge. Unfortunately, because this is kind of a, a task that has been set up for Sisyphus, uh, the, the, uh, trying to get on the ballot each time, they roll the rock up to the top of the hill and every election cycle it rolls back down because they not only have uh, rules for ballot access that don't apply to the Republicans and Democrats, 
But then they also have rules for ballot, uh, ballot retention. And so, yeah, if you don't uh, get to a certain percentage and they set that really high, very unrealistically high, they do it only for the top races, governor and usually and president, then you have to start all over again. The rock rolls down to the bottom of the hill and you've got to push it back up again. And then, of course, they're excluded from the debates because after Ross Perot got in the debates, they raise the level to 15 percent. So, yeah, you can get on the ballot in all 50 states, but it, they still have ways that they control the election process. Now we see Mary Madeline. I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, many of you may not know who Mary Madeline is. Uh, she was married to, uh, still is, I think, I don't know, I haven't kept up with her social life, uh, James Carville, who was the kind of called him the Red Skull of uh, for Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. He was a campaign manager, I think, but he was always a spokesperson for the Clintons, uh, a rabid, rabid Democrat, kind of a, a nasty guy when you watch him on television. Mary Madeline was a Republican. She was married to him, and so they were this, uh, this odd couple, uh, one of them working for the Bushes, Mary Madeline, the other one working for the Clintons. And now she's saying she has changed her party registration to Libertarian. And it's like, great. You know, I've been registered Libertarian all my life. Uh, I voted, uh, I, a registered Republican to vote in the primary. But um, she's changed her registration to the Libertarian Party. She says, I'm not a Republican for a party or for a person. Really? She wasn't a Bush Republican? When did she ever... And all of these years I've been watching her, when did she ever defend liberty or peace? Always for war, always backing up the war on drugs as well domestically here at home and the police surveillance state, the whole 9-11 homeland security stuff. But now she's going libertarian. There's something else behind that, folks. Stay with us. We'll be right back with your calls. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show, fourth hour. I'm David Knight. We're going to go to your calls in just a moment. Saw this article, uh, the Pew uh, people... Pew Research Center did a poll and said 57% of Americans say they agree with the idea of America first. And when I saw that headline, I thought, what's the matter with the other 43%? I mean, why, why would 40% of the people uh, say, uh, no, not America first? I mean, what position is America supposed to be in when we talk about our foreign policy? Are we supposed to put, how many, how many countries come ahead of America's interests for those 40%. Are we in second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place? Uh, should we just dissolve America and uh, join the new world order? What, what is the problem with America first? I don't really understand. When people talk to you about that, maybe we should talk about this and we'll talk about the next segment. We'll talk about a little bit about the history of where that phrase America first has come from because we've had a lot of spin on that. Before I get to your phone calls, real quickly, 10% off all preparedness products at InfoWarsLife.com. This is a great sell, something that you need to take advantage of. This is not only things like Survival Shield X2, Secret 12, Deep Cleanse, Knockout, Silver Bullet, and others. Okay, these are products that you need to have as part of your preparedness. Uh, the things that you're going to have in case you have a uh, grid down like we've had. We've, we're still uh, a week later. We still don't have Internet after the storms that came through here. We were out of power for several days. But you need to prepare for yourself. And it's not just the nutritional supplements that would be for a longer term situation, but also things for shorter term situation that we have now 10 percent off. Things like shortwave radios, uh, water filters. Watches, security products, survival accessories, and also long-term things like heirloom seeds. And if you need something to prepare for food right away, if you're not going to grow your own garden, at least have a cabinet that is full of storable foods, things that you can turn to in an emergency. Because, you know, we have just-in-time delivery throughout the United States. We don't have, everybody's gotten very, very clever in terms of managing their inventory. So they don't store stuff that's going to last for a very long time. They don't have massive warehouse backups. So you're going to find that if you've got any kind of a breakdown in this very sophisticated supply chain that we've got, you're going to be out of food on the shelves in the grocery stores very quickly. So make sure you've got food on the shelf at home. 30 to 40% off right now. This is an incredible sale uh, that Alex has gotten extended at InfoWarsStore.com. That's our InfoWars Select Storable Food, all made in the USA, all non-GMO, with a shelf life of 25 years. Now is the time to stock up on InfoWars Select Storable Food. All right, let's go to uh, Bill in Florida. Bill, you had a comment about uh, Trump cabinet. Go ahead. Hello, David. God bless you, and, and God bless Donald Trump. Well, thank you. Uh, I have a question for you, 
And uh, I was just wondering, do you think that there is anywhere in the Trump uh, administration or the Trump cabinet for, uh, say, Sheriff Joe Arpaio or, or Andrew Napolitano? Well, I said before, I would like to see, I'd like to see Judge Napolitano uh, as the Supreme Court pick. Uh, I, I would really like to see Judge Napolitano. And you know what? You know what? The president would do something like that. Donald Trump would do something like that. And whether the criticism and the, the mocking that people would do, Judge Napolitano is a serious, serious intellectual person. He understands the Constitution, and he would be a serious pick. And I really would like to see uh, Judge Knapp as, as the Supreme Court pick for Donald Trump. But, of course, we've got the Never Trump people out there saying, oh, let's get Merrick Garland in now because Trump might win the presidency. And it's like this guy who has been consistently against the Second Amendment, consistently rubber stamping everything the bureaucracy says, that is what these GOP elitists are advocating now. Who do you think he should put in, Bill? Well, I, I was kind of thinking uh, Judge uh, Napolitano uh, for, for vice president. Yeah, I mean, I mean that'd be great. That's going to, he's going to stand up for the Constitution no matter what. That'd be great, yeah. And, He'd be a great debater, uh, too, wouldn't he? Yeah, and I was thinking maybe Attorney General uh, Sheriff Joe, because he, he's a no-nonsense guy, and he does his job. Well, it certainly is going to make Sheriff Joe's uh, life easier in terms of the persecution that he's been facing from the Obama administration for trying to protect the people there from the illegals that are coming across the border unvetted. Uh, so there's been a lot of back and forth, a lot of direct uh, conflict by the Obama administration. I think one of the things that that conflict shows us is just how much power a sheriff has. And that is power that is just laying there for the local communities to try to take back their government, to try to have a government that is closer to them. We can play these games about uh, who he should pick and everything. Who knows what Donald Trump is going to do with this? And that's something that I wouldn't expect him to do for a while. And he really hasn't gotten the nomination just yet. He believes that he has. He told people in West Virginia, don't bother showing up in the polls because we've got this sewn up. I think that might be a mistake. It's not done yet. Stay with us. We'll be right back with your phone calls. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to go back to your calls in just a moment. I mentioned briefly in the last segment how 57% of Americans say they agree with the idea of America first. And I said, what's the matter with the other 40%? What, what is the problem? Why would America not be first? Part of that may be the way that many in the media are spinning this term America first. They're saying, well, this is... A, uh, an idea that's been attached to racism. And I'm not even going to talk about that part of it. I want to go back to where the real term came from. You know, they, they, they try to tie it to racism because they say, well, you know, was Charles Lindbergh was there and he had Nazi sympathies. We can debate whether he had not, Nazi sympathies or not. It really doesn't matter. Why wouldn't we put America's economic interests first? Why wouldn't we have a country that has borders, that has a say-so about its destiny. Let's go back and look at where this America First movement was, because Charles Lindbergh was just one person. There were a lot of people. As a matter of fact, it was most of the Republican Party, the majority view of the Republican Party, that we should not get involved in World War II. That was the America First people. It wasn't because they hated Jews, okay? They didn't even know about it, most of these people, I believe. Certainly the public did not know what was going on in the concentration camps when they wanted to stay out of war. It was a reaction to how they had been betrayed and lied to to get into World War I. You got to remember, this is only about 20 or so years after Woodrow Wilson had promised he would never get us into a war and then got us involved in a European war, World War I, that had horrific consequences. Far more people died there than died in Vietnam. And think about how our country reacted in the aftermath of Vietnam after we saw how the politicians had betrayed our Americans and used them as cannon fodder, taking an area and then releasing it back to the enemy and so forth and so on, telling us that we had to do this because all of Asia was going to fall to the Chinese communists if we didn't. And we saw what the aftermath was. And now, subsequently, we've seen Robert McNamara confess and say, well, you know, there never really was a domino issue. We never really did have a Gulf of Tonkin incident. He said that in a documentary, The Fog of War. You should see that, see what he confesses to. But going back to World War I and thinking about 
what happened there. People did not want another world war. They were drug into World War I against their will, many of them. They realized that this is not what the founders wanted. They did not want us to get entangled in the continual wars of Europe. There wasn't a good reason for World War I for anybody, not even the people in Europe, but certainly not for Americans. And yet, you look at the massive casualties that we had as a result of World War I. So it was a massive betrayal. And one of the ways that Woodrow Wilson got us involved in World War I, it really fractured the country philosophically. Prior to that, we had people that we now call libertarians were called liberals because they supported liberty. These are people who supported economic as well as personal liberty. And that was fractured by the move to get us into World War I. Many of the business interests who had advocated economic liberty, free markets within America, and that's different from free trade that we're talking about, folks. You know, we have open borders for trade, but we have a lot of barriers to a free market inside the country. But they supported economic liberty, and then they started supporting the war. And what that did was that caused a fraction, uh, a, a splitting between people who had identified as liberals. That's why a lot of libertarians will say, well, I'm a classical liberal. At that point, we saw this kind of division, which has been really frustrating over the years. We see oftentimes in the Democrat Party, we got people who are taking positions of individual liberty, personal liberty. But they don't like the idea of free markets. They don't like the idea that you should be able to earn your money. They want to manage the economy centrally, okay, because it was the socialists who, were, who sided with them in terms of opposing the war. Then on the other side, you've got people who say, yeah, we want to have economic freedom, but then they wanted it in many cases because they wanted to make money off of the war. And everybody realized the corruption of that. And so you have this... These two parties, neither of which really stands for liberty together. That's why the Libertarian Party came up. That's why we had the Nolan chart where they asked people questions about economic liberty and about personal liberty. And you see how libertarian you are. We had to come up with a new name because they'd co-opted that. And it's also interesting if you go back and look at the history, look at the Palmer raids that Woodrow Wilson did. That was where J. Edgar Hoover got his start, okay? That was the Department of Justice's uh, Bureau of Investigation, which later became the FBI, which became his little personal fiefdom. And the, you had the Palmer raids coming after people saying that uh, they weren't sure about the loyalties of foreigners who were here in this country or people who had just immigrated. Uh, they were concerned about communists infiltrating. And there were real concerns there, but for the most part, Wilson did everything he could to engineer us into that war. As I've mentioned before, you know, he passed the Espionage Act that Obama has now used more than any other president to lock up journalists and people who write opinions. It was Woodrow Wilson who locked up a film producer, gave him a, I think it was a five-year sentence. He served three years of it. He did a movie called The Spirit of 76, which was about our American Revolution. But because Woodrow Wilson wanted to go into the war on the side of the British, he said... This is anti-British, and he, the guy got a $10,000 fine, and uh, it was either $10,000 or $5,000, uh, and 10 years or 5 years in jail. I can't remember off the top of my head. But the, first, the Supreme Court said, no, First Amendment doesn't apply to movies, and he's allowed to lock you up. So these are the background. All these things that happened in World War I, that was the background to people saying, we're not going to get roped into this again 20 years later. We're going to put America first. Now, after we fought World War II, after we saw what happened with the Nazis, after we saw what happened with the concentration camps, Americans are the first to jump into every war. And in a way, that says something about their character, but they need to be a little bit more discerning. Because if you go back and you look at our history since World War II, we have been drug into conflict after conflict for which we did not need to be drug into just because we thought we were going to be the saviors of the world. We need to get over that, and we need to go back to America first and say we are not going to be the cannon fodder for these GOP elitists, just as we saw Robert Cohen saying, you know, all these people who support Trump, they're a bunch of losers. They don't have jobs, and it isn't because we've sent them, sent their jobs to a foreign country and imported workers. No, it isn't that. They're just a bunch of losers, and we call these people cannon fodder, and we send them to fight wars in the past. That's the way they view you. And that's the casual way in which they enter these wars for profit. And so we need to be more discerning about that. There are some fights we should get involved in, but I'd be hard-pressed to see one since World War II uh, that we should get involved in. And, and I would even have been part of the America First movement during World War II. 
And we saw how FDR used the false flag attack of Pearl Harbor. Not that he was the one bombing Pearl Harbor, but they knew it was coming. They allowed it to come because they wanted to get us into that war. All right, let's go back to your phone calls right now. Antonio in California, go ahead. Hello, Antonio. Hey, David, how's hey, it going? It's nice to speak to you again. Good to speak to you. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, so if you would allow me, I would like to plug your products, but I just wanted to make a oh, quick sure. uh, thing about you. Sure, uh, what do you like use? Trump, you what, know? what do you like? Uh, uh, I use... Uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, I use the iodine, the deep cleanse, uh, super male vitality. I just ordered the other one, the uh, Androplex. Ah, good. Good. Uh, and we got a 10% uh, uh, discount sale on that. Of course, you always get a 10% sale if you sign up for AutoShip. How are they working for you? Uh, they're working very good, you know, and also I, I'm wearing an InfoWars shirt right now, too. Uh, that's how I met my fiance. I was wearing a 9-11 was the inside job shirt. <laughs> she saw me wearing that. And no joke. She that's saw great. me wearing that. And she was like, that's, she was like, that's true. And from there, now we're engaged. <laughs> that's great. True that's story. great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about Trump? That, that's super. That's, that is a way that you can find people with like minds in a crowd. <laughs> that's a great way to find them. But what do you think about Trump, Antonio? You know, uh, I was a year ago or less than, less than a year ago before he started running. Yeah, I was skeptical. I even had a friend that she campaigned for him over there in uh, Nevada in Reno. And uh, I told her, I'm like, I don't feel like watching like, an apprentice kind of a show, you know, I don't want it the celebrity kind of thing. Right. I was more Ted Cruz, of course, Rand Paul. And then come to find out, she, you know, she's really connected with, uh, within the Republican party over there in, uh, Nevada. And she was in a campaign for Ted Cruz. And, you know, she ended up telling me after recently, like, I'm glad that she, or she's saying that I'm glad that, uh, she, you know, that she made that, uh, that choice to campaign for, Donald Trump and I was anti that a year ago mm -hmm. and now it's just like and not that he's our savior and we're not trying to build him up like how all the um, trendies were like about uh, you know Obama he's gonna save us no I, I know it's a spiritual war I know that but you know we can try and do our part you know and he says some good things do I agree with everything with him just as you don't or Alex right. does or you know many people on your staff are probably not gonna even vote for him too so it's just like you know he's the best we got well, you know, no candidate, no candidate is 100 percent. And at the very beginning, I was very anti-Trump. I, I really didn't like Donald Trump because to me, it looked like a cult of personality. It looked like everybody was getting behind someone just because he was a celebrity. But as I began to see his positions come out, his policy statements, even on immigration, even though I didn't agree with every one of the points of his uh, immigration policy necessarily, I, I didn't think that uh, a, a, a wall is, and I still am not sure that a wall is really the answer. I don't want to be walled in as an American in order to not be able to get out of this country. Nevertheless, you know, we can look at the individual aspects of it. I really appreciate the specificity of it. And I wasn't seeing that from any other candidate. And then when he came out with some of the policies like how he's going to deal with Obamacare, we've heard just these generalities from these other candidates about, well, I'm going to repeal and replace it or whatever. But he was very specific, had a seven-point plan, showed that he really understood all the different aspects that need to be fixed in our health care system. It isn't that we're going to fix everything by pulling it in and letting Washington manage it. The problem is we had uh, expensive health care and it was getting rapidly more expensive and still is because we don't have any mechanisms to control it. We don't have any market mechanisms. And so he understands that. First of all, he's going to get rid of the mandate. He's going to give people a tax incentive if you buy insurance. So help, help people instead of uh, giving them penalty if they can't afford to get health insurance. Then he gives you ownership of health savings accounts. He creates competition by getting rid of the restrictions that we have for different insurance companies competing in different states. I mean, think about that. We're told that we have to have free trade. So we need to take down all the trade barriers and ship our factories overseas where they can make it cheap and then ship the products back in. But we can't have competition with insurance companies between different states. I mean, how insane is that? America was supposed to be a free trade zone to start with. That's what we set it up with. And when Thomas Jefferson eliminated all internal taxes, he did it by having tariffs to fund a small constitutional government. And so now we see these, these Republicans out there, and as Donald Trump says, well, they're upset with me because I said I would raise taxes in order to uh, control trade here. 
we need to go back and understand that when they gave us the income tax, what they did was they sold it partially on the basis of saying we're going to reduce the tariffs, but we're going to put an income tax uh, there to make it revenue neutral. We need to also talk to uh, Donald Trump, I think, and say, hey, talk about this. Talk about cutting income taxes to compensate for these rise, the rise in tariffs. I think people would really appreciate that. Make sure that you're not going to overall net raise taxes, but uh, at the very least that you're going to keep the tax burden somewhat the same. We need to see something like that. Um, and I think, Antonio, as, as we look at this, we're not going to agree with everything that anybody says, but the real issue, Antonio, is that this comes down to nationalism versus globalism. And I think Donald Trump is very authentic on that issue. Uh, I don't think that he's, he's going to move one way or the other, and that's what Roger Stone was saying today as well. Do you believe that? Uh, most definitely. And if I, if I could add one more thing, I'm, I'm Mexican. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, born here, you know, born here illegally. I didn't come from over the border. Right. But, um, I have come across a lot of people that obviously that are Mexican, like, Oh, Donald Trump, he wants to send everybody back. I've been told that even by, I'm like, <laughs> I was born here. He's not sending, you know, he's, right. he's not sending me back. Like what's like, even coworkers, uh, I've heard it from every, everybody is like, are you not actually reading the news? You know, they're just being <laughs> trendies and just yeah. looking at the mainstream media, you know? That's right. And again, he's not our savior. I know that. But it's just, like, listen to what he's saying. You know, listen to it. Yes. Don't be programmed. That's right. That's right. They're spinning what he's saying, and they're misrepresenting what he's saying, and they did it on the Muslims as well. Thank you very much, Antonio. I want to get some other callers in here. Let's go to uh, Skits. Skits in Nebraska. Um, now, that's where Ben Sass is. Uh, there's been a lot of push by Billy Crystal and others, uh, the Weekly Standard, who want to uh, see Ben Sass uh, do something as an independent. Uh, what do you think of Ben Sass? Oh, hold on, David. Uh, I live in the panhandle of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Where Ben Sass represents is everything east of North Platte. So we, you know, personally, uh, I'm I'm not informed on Mr. Sass. But mm -hmm. now, yeah, to your original question, one of the first things Donald Trump should do is fire his serv Secret Service detail and hire his own security. Yeah. If you just look yeah. back in history. It was the Secret Service that uh, that set Kennedy up like a clay pigeon to have him off. That's so, true. And yeah. not only that, but Secret Service is under the Department of the Treasury, and the Department of Treasury is intertwined with the Federal Reserve. Guess who the Federal Reserve is covered <laughs> by? That's yeah, right. Okay, so yeah, right. can you can you can 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 you connect more dots? All right. The second thing I was do I would do if I if Mr. Trump. I wouldn't say anything about this. I go on about tax incentives, but you know what? I flip the table and say, you know what? Article one, section eight of the Constitution says here the Congress shall have the uh, it's Congress's responsibility to uh, coin m money and set the value of That's Federal right. Reserve. Goodbye. That's hey, right. Hey, all those trillions of dollars that uh, in, in Treasury notes. Well, hey. Uh, China or all these other people. Well, go see Mr. Rockefeller about that. That's not our problem. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you're going to have to, I think, though, as an intermediate step, you're going to have to audit the Fed. You're going to have to try to educate the public a little bit more because I I've even talked to people who were bank managers, and of course, they call them vice presidents. If you manage a, a local branch of, of a bank, you're vice president. But he was telling me, oh, they don't have any effect on the economy. He was absolutely clueless. He said, all they do is clear checks because that's all he saw. What do you think the vast majority of the public think about the Federal Reserve? They don't realize that it's private. They don't realize and even think about how if it was just interest rates that they were setting, how that would allow them to have the power to create boom and bust if that was all that they were doing. And so I think we really need to have some kind of an audit at the Fed. I think that's a great place to start. Clearly, Ron Paul and Rand Paul understand what's going on with the Federal Reserve, and I believe that they were wise to start out with an audit the Fed process. If you do that, if you show the criminality, if you educate people about what's really going on with it, then, uh, and we got an article, uh, Infowars.com, 25 fast facts about the Federal Reserve. Okay, please share with everyone you know. Take a look at that article at Infowars.com. And that's what we need to do. We need to start educating people, but the vast majority of Americans are not going to get educated unless we do an audit of the Fed. And then at that point, 
you can start talking about what you're going to do. I mean, we had Andrew Jackson who stood up to the Fed. He stood up to the Supreme Court and everything. He said, well, uh, we're not going to renew their charter. That was one heck of a fight. You talk about somebody uh, having a hit put on them. Uh, that's, many people believe that's why there was the assassination attempt on Andrew Jackson. But now the Fed has got a perpetual... Uh, Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. This last segment, we're going to go back to our callers in just one second. Before we do, real quickly, I want to let you know that we've got 10% all off all preparedness products at InfoWarsLife.com and at InfoWarsStore.com. That's 10% off all shortwave radios, all heirloom seeds, water filters, watches, security products, and survival accessories. And we also have 10% off InfoWars Life formulas like Survival Shield X2, Secret 12, Deep Cleanse, Knockout, Silver Bullet, and others. And if you want to really prepare, 30 to 40% off, 30 to 40% off select storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com. Those are our uh, prepared foods that have a shelf life of 25 years, all made in the USA. They are GMO free, and uh, this is excellent packaging that you can find in a incredible discount 30 to 40 percent off all select storable foods at infowarsstore.com so check out those sales uh 30 to 40 percent off the food and 10 percent off other preparedness products let's go quickly to steven in florida steven you said you want to talk about the aftermath of the cruise campaign uh yes sir hey first of all i want to give a plug to uh, <clears throat> a couple of your products i just got the oxy powder took it for the first time last night and i'll tell you what that so, stuff works. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got my five bowel movements in all this morning, and boy, I tell you <laughs> what, it's uh, really something. Uh, the other one is the silver bullet, and I just wanted to say this. If you're sick and feeling bad, want a recovery like you've not had, grab a silver bullet and take aim. Kill what <laughs> ails you. Stay on top of your game. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, great. Great. Art. You know, I use that a lot when I have uh, cuts and other things even. I use it topically because that's been a long-term medical remedy uh, for handling infections. And they still use that in some burn units and other things, silver-based products. So, yeah, that's a very valuable thing to have. And it's not going to go bad. It's a good time to stock up on it while it's, uh, while it's on sale. Tell us about the cruise aftermath, Stephen. Hey, uh, what I wanted to do is give my own... Uh uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, what do they call that word, uh, you know, where they do a, uh, in the, in the aftermath of somebody dying, uh, uh, the, uh an obituary. Yeah. Obituary. Okay. Here's my obituary for Cruz's presidential campaign. Uh, Titanic cruise lines where bon voyage really means bon appetit for the global elite. Come join us as we cruise to the point of no return. While on board, enjoy some of our favorite pastimes, musical deck chairs, bush bingo, dance with the devil. Oh, and by the way, visit our Goldman Sachs the Go-Go Lounge and enjoy our special neocon coction, bush back brew, and Clinton coladonistas. <laughs> oh, and light up uh, one of our complimentary Raphael CCC cigars, Cuban CIA connection. Oh, but there's a disclaimer for this cruise. If by some odd chance you should notice any of those annoying icebergs bearing an inscription, reality check, chill, Ted, pay it no mind. It's merely an operative illusion or a conspiracy theory. But hey, if by some quirk of fate our ship does go down, forget this women and children first stuff. Captain Ted is out of here. After all, a cruise in Jeb's hand is worth two Clintons. And a bush. Uh, there you go. I, I got a feeling you don't like uh, Ted Cruz, Stephen. Let me ask you this. Trump went to West Virginia yesterday, and he told a crowd of 13,000 I no longer had to vote in Tuesday's Republican primary. He says, what I want you to do is save your vote. Uh, save it for the general election, okay? Forget this one. The primary's gone. Do you think he's got it wrapped up? He's not at 1237 yet. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's... What do you think, Stephen? No, I, I, I think he's jumping the gun, even though it's yeah. looking like he will be the nominee. I think that's kind of presumptuous. In exactly, the yeah. Process. Yeah, he may be the presumptive nominee, but he must not get presumptuous because these guys who run the GOP are pretty tricky. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for the nightly news. Leanne McAdoo is back.